I'm not surprised, motherfuckers. <laughs> What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Put That Sound Out Podcast. Once again, I'm Josh Shemanov. Welcome, as always, by the one and only Angel Ortega. A lot of us to talk about this week, guys. It is a jam-packed week. We got UC Vegas 53 to go over, but then we have a shit ton of previews. UC 274 going down this weekend. Belzor 280 going down this Friday from France. Canelo Alvarez is taking on Dimitri Bivol in the boxing ring. Once again, before we get started... RogueEnergy.com. If you want 10% off your order at RogueEnergy.com, use the code SOUNDOFF at checkout. That's code SOUNDOFF at checkout for 10% off of all your energy needs. Been a sponsor of the show for a long time. Feel free to go show them some love. Get yourself something. Get somebody you love something. It is a, uh, they have fantastic products, fantastic products line. Angel, I know you're still a huge fan of them. What, Angel, what is your favorite flavor of Rogue Energy? Uh, it's still the fruit punch. It is very sweet though, I will say that. Which there's nothing wrong with, but that just means you don't need a lot. Exactly. See, you know what, you don't need a lot, but you, what you do need is to get it from RogueEnergy.com. Code sound of a check. It's 10% off. So, yeah, go guys. Go get, go get yourself home. Code sound off. Last Saturday night, UC Apex in Las Vegas, Nevada. UC Vegas 53, a bantamweight main event that turned into a catchweight main event between Marlon Vera and Rob Font. Rob Font missed weight by, I believe, two and a half pounds. Um, in the end, a lot of, you know, like, I feel like there's, like, kind of that, that statistic out there, Angel. I'm sure you've seen it. Like, guys who miss weight tend to win. Um, is this actually a fact? You're like, did you actually see the numbers for this? Uh, I'm sure you can look it up. I don't remember what the exact numbers are, but it's, it's like, maybe it's down this year, but I feel like on average, if you look throughout MMA history, like, people who miss weight tend to it's win okay. more. We don't fact check on the show. We don't. We don't. Um, it's, an, it's, of course, that's not a fact, though, for sure. Um, but regardless, uh, so that weight miss did not matter. Uh, uh, Marla Vera kicked the shit out of him. It was, it was almost a repeat of his, his of, uh, Rob Font's last fight against Jose Aldo. Uh, if you guys remember that one, Font went out there putting on a bunch of cardio. He, he was showcasing the cardio. He was throwing a lot of volume, but he wasn't really going for the knockout, you know. He was just trying to pace himself while also landing a lot and throwing a lot of different looks out there. But every single time he got knocked down near the end of the round, and the same thing happened here. <laughs> Marlon Vera ends up winning unanimous decision 48, 47, 49, 46, 49, 46. I believe he got four knockdowns. Um, could be three knockdowns, but it was somewhere around there, three, four knockdowns. And he just bloodied and battered him just by getting outstruck by, I believe, nearly 100 strikes, man. Uh, this was, this was hard to watch at times, but in the end, Marlon Chito Vera not only gets the win, he breaks into the top five. Biggest win of his career. Give me your thoughts on Marlon Chito Vera getting the win. And give me your thoughts on what you want to see for him next. I know he's already called out a couple of different people. Uh, first, very impressive performance, right? We, I think this has been one of our best uh, predictions of the whole year, Josh, honestly. Uh, cause this was, a, this one was a hard one to pick. I mean, they were, she was a near even and Rob was like the slightest, the slightest favorite you can be going into this fight, if I remember right. Yeah. Uh, so I think, I mean, first of all, big W for us this year, you know? I mean, just, you know, just, you know, what, I mean, what, what, what else do you expect? But we predicted the call main event correctly as well. And in case you guys aren't tracking, I am. In case you guys aren't tracking, uh, this year to date, I have a record of 33 and 13. It's Andrew pretty rough for 20, me. 29 and 17. Yeah, it's, it's rough this year for me, but I've got, I've had a lot of Senate picks this you, year. Hey, you went, you went, you went perfect last week. I did, I, I did. And I, you know, and you know, we'll hopefully we'll perfect this week. It's a pay per view, you know. I got to recover. Yeah, you, this this is where you make up the ground. This is where you make up the ground. And it's gonna be rough, dude. I, I've had a lot of send ins, you know, this year. Not like, like last year, I did it, but I did it out of ballsiness. This year, I I just wanted to, you know, see if I could get some of the own, you know, like unexpected picks out there, but get some upsets. But it, it's been rough, man. I mean, we're halfway. It is only May. Maybe. We still got a lot of time left. True, man. But you got to keep it pretty good from the start, you know. True. True. And I, I could have saved myself on some of them, but I decided, you know, say fuck it and, you know, choose some people that I thought were going to win, and they didn't. It happens, it happens. Mm-hmm. But regardless, man, yeah, I mean, it was a solid pick by us, you know. Um, it, and, hey, look, dude, Cheeto Vera, uh, that was impressive as fuck. I mean, you know, we we kind of raised the point, I remember I did, and you were like, oh, that's a pretty good point, about how, like, Cheeto generally comes on as a fight goes on. And I think he did probably start maybe even down in a, in a 2-0 hole. But, dude, like, he started cracking him, dude. As if, I thought he probably just 
Like I, I, I even I was surprised at how well he was coming on in the championship rounds. Um, this is a huge win for him. And after the fight, he's called out. Not, I mean, he granted he called out two names, and there was another one that was thrown around for him. So I'll go ahead and ask you this question: There are three fights that have been room for Tito Vera next. He said Dominic Cruz because Dominic Cruz turned on the fight with him before. Because apparently Dom Cruz wanted to fight somebody who would get closer to the rankings. And in the words of Cheeto Vera, I'm above you right now, motherfucker. Let's go. I love so, that energy. Um, Dom Cruz is an option. He said he wants to fight Jose Aldo in a five-rounder because uh, he thinks he will kick his ass this time. Uh, again, quoted from Cheeto Vera. Uh, this <laughs> one is I love another this one. energy. Yeah, this one is not a quote for it, but there was talk of him fighting Piotr Jan uh, whenever Piotr Jan comes back. I believe Peter Jan's management might have said something on Twitter about this one. So of those three options, who do you want to see him fight next, and what do you think will actually happen next? Uh, I like the Jan one. I think uh, Cruz could be more like, which sounds crazy because I feel like if you were to lay it out like that, I think most people would think Cruz is like not a likely option, but I can see that very much happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's kind of where I am. Um, I think Aldo could be getting the top shot next. Apparently, according to Aldo... Um, Aljamain has been offered that fight, you know, Aldo. Oh, wow. So that's according I, to him. I, I no, don't, I don't, no, no CEO of EPO? No CEO of EPO. So, um, obviously it remains to be seen if that's actually true or not. Um, I just kind of, just kind of going off of what Aldo said, but apparently that fight has been offered. Um, you know, as, as far as Piotr Jan goes, I don't know who he will find next. Honestly, I don't have a clue. I think Cheeto makes sense, but, um, Shit, if, if Peter Jan, it also, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, it all depends on who, uh, Aljamain's gonna fight. I think if Aljamain ends up fighting Aldo, he'll end up, Cheeto will probably end up fighting Peter Jan. You know, I think that makes a lot of sense. To, what's gonna happen to TJ? Who gives a shit? No, <laughs> who do you think TJ would fight at that point? They can't just leave it, TJ. Uh, I think Dom Cruz makes a lot of sense. Interesting. A TJ Dom rematch. That's just, that's just me. All I, I, mean, all I, I wanted, Jose Aldo, Dom Cruz, man. They, they just don't want to give it to me, Josh. They don't for some reason. I don't know why. Then again, Bantamweight is in a really big state of flux. It could happen. Regardless, um, yeah, man, solid win by Tito Vera. Rob Font's in a weird position, man. I mean, I mean, I think we kind of, like, he, like, got up to, like, number three in the division or something, like, really out of nowhere, like, super quietly, and now he's faced a top guy in the division, Aldo, and Vera, he's gotten the shit kicked out of him. So I think he's got to take a st- big, big step back, man. I think he probably, I honestly, I think he should take some time off. Um, cause like, even though this is technically a close fight and so is technically the Aldo one, I, I know he took rounds in that one as well. He got his ass kicked near is the it end. Is he like 34 though? Uh, he is, yeah, you're right. 34. He's about to be 35 next month. Yeah, he's in a tough place, man. At this age, like, this should have been the time, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, for, just for his own health though, I'm, I'm saying he should take a step back. No, yeah, yeah, definitely, but you know, do all due respect, man. It's you know, this this was your time, bro, to shine. And sure, sure. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is a solid main event. Like the fight a lot. This was kind of like um, the call main event earned a lot of uh, a lot of talking about, dude. So I'm gonna go and get your thoughts on this one. Andre Wolski, Jake Collier. This fight banged uh, a lot better than I thought it would. Jake Collier just said that he's not going to play that general Olofsky game where Olofsky just kind of sits on the outside. He counters. He's very sharp. Um, he's had a super boxing heavy style over the past few years, probably just to like try and, you know, bring down the damage, which he suffered a lot in his earlier career. Um, and it's worked for him. You know, three, five winning streak going into this. It extends to four. He wins via split decision. Very, very controversial decision. Um, I personally scored the fight for Jake Collier. Uh, I know that every, I think 14 out of 14 media outlets scored it for Jake Collier Holy on shit. MMA decision. Um, and I know that it, it's probably in the leading, I don't know for sure, but it's probably in the leading for most, for, like, if you had to call fight a robbery, probably robbery of the year, at least at this point. Um, but give me your thoughts on this one, man. Did you think that he had done enough to win? I mean, I know that some people were kind of saying, you know what, maybe. Um, but in case you guys are curious about the scorecards, um, this is one of the few times in USC history where somebody won 30-27 on the cards, on one card, Holy and then shit. lost. Yeah, Collier got a 30-27 from Judge Michael Bell and Douglas Crosby, and Sal D'Amato scored it 29-28 for Arlovsky. So, Andrew, give me your thoughts on this one. Do you think that Arlovsky did enough to win? I mean, dude, this is one I have to go over back and rewatch because it did not come without controversy. But I've listened a lot. I've read a lot of stuff. And for what it sounds, everybody's on the same page that uh, 
Yeah, Jake Collier won. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you said you're going to go back and rewatch it, but in terms of like when you first watched it, I'm assuming you watched it with the boys. What did you think? Uh, you know, you know how it is sometimes, Josh. You know, yeah. when you watch it with the boys, it's it's it's, yeah. it's always a little rough, you know. Unless it's a finish, sometimes it's like, yeah, you know. Yeah. And that was a busy night for me, man. We had boxing going on. Like I was back and forth, man. You know, it's. So you don't feel comfortable sharing your scorecard? I didn't have a scorecard for this. Funny enough, I kept a scorecard for both mock. Actually, no, for one boxing match. Oh, okay. Actually, for both, I just didn't get a a complete one for the other. Because like, oh, I okay. missed the first three rounds, I think. Oh, okay. Fair enough. If, fair if enough. that gives you an idea of my night. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I scored it 29-28 for Collier. I gave Arlovsky round two, and I did think round uh, – I thought round one – I'll be honest. I didn't freak out about this one as much as most people. I thought round two was um, a pretty cl- – I'll put it like this. Rounds – Two and three were very, very close. Call it what it is, Josh. No, okay. Yeah, I mean, I thought rounds two and three were very, very close. I thought Arlovsky took round two, and I thought Collier took round three. Um, I thought Arlovsky was winning on the fight, but, like winning round three up until there was a takedown near the end, um, which I normally hate when people get takedowns near the end because it's to steal them the round, but it was super, super close in the striking up to that point. Jake Collier got a takedown probably like a minute left, you know, and that, I thought sealed the round for him. Um, I'm not going to cry robbery, but I did think Jake Collier did enough to win that one. Uh, the reason I'm not going to cry robbery is because our boy Andre Arlovsky is 43 years young. <laughs> and dude, on a four-fight fucking winning streak, dude. Six dude, or seven. Dude, road, road to the title. I think it's bullshit he's not ranked. I'm going to go ahead and say it. I don't care that, like, somebody was like, oh, yeah, but he hasn't beaten anybody good. I'm like, Chase Sherman, Carlos Felipe, Jared Vindera, and Jake Collier. Are those big names? No. But if it was anybody else, they'd be ranked. Yes. Especially at heavyweight. He- dude, like... Let, let me go ahead and go to the heavyweight rankings right now. Like, actually, look, real quickly. So there's one person in those rankings that probably shouldn't be there. That's all I'm going to say. Can I guess who it is? Yes. Is it... Is it Blagoy? No. Is it... I guess it's Sakai? No. Shamil? Oh, wait, actually, the person I think about got moved out of the rankings. So You're talking about Walt Harris? Yes. Yeah. Actually, I, I, I thought Walt Harris was ranked until I'm looking at him right now, to be honest with you. I thought he was too. This must have been a recent change. I want to see Orlowski versus Walt Harris next, or versus Shamil. You know that fight would have made sense like four fights ago for Walt Harris. Uh, I, I don't. I think you're four fights late, Josh. If I'm being honest with you, I don't think so. I think Walt needs a fight that is. They fought back in 2018. Walt beat him. Um, Grant was overturned because of some. Uh, the, the USADA, you know, um, they stepped but, in, <laughs> and I thought I lost. He actually won that one. It was a split decision, but was someone saucy or was someone uh, smoking the ganj? Uh, he tested positive for Lig General. Uh, I don't which know what is that is. A, it's a it's a SARM. Oh, so. okay, okay, okay. So yeah, that's why I got it returned. Um, but anyways, yeah, I. Eh. I, I want to see Walt Harris get a fight that's winnable. I mean, they really did give him some fucking tough matchups after, you know, what happened happened um, for some reason, which is really fucked up. The, the more I think about it, it's super fucked up. It yeah, doesn't I make any Walt, sense, does it? it? It makes the exact opposite sense of what you'd expect. But, yeah, I want to go ahead and see uh, Walt Harris versus um, – I'm surprised they gave him a gun, oh, you awesome. know, <laughs> just the way they were handing him people, dude. Yeah, I want to I want to go ahead and see Walt Harris versus Arlovsky next, or Arlovsky versus Shamil. I think Arlovsky deserves a crack at somebody ranked. And like, despite the fact that people are like always oh, fighting garbage guys, it's like he talked about it in media. He's like, yeah, I'm still got that gold star on the title. You know, I'm just fighting whoever they'll give me. He he just fight, one. They could just give him boomers, dude. I feel like they could give him some good fights. No hate, no hate. You know, I'm like not trying to say like, you know, give him easy fights, but I'm like. I feel like if he were to fight someone, he could fight Blagoy. I feel like that's not a bad matchup. He could fight Shamil, and that's why it would make sense. Yeah, and I don't know why people are uh, – yeah, I mean, the style that Arlovsky's using right now is a style that people are like, oh, he's not having close fights. I'm like, that style is designed almost to have close fights. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because he's like – he's not going to go for the finish unless he's super, super clear. It's staying on the outside, boxing, and using counters, and using defense. Like he, It's almost like they don't want to see Andre Arlovsky ever fight again. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he, dude, I'm glad that he has a style where he's being very, very safe. And he's like, I, I'll be, dude, he, if we had a comeback of the year fighter, Ozzy would be winning right now for me. Like, four fight winning streak, six of his last seven. 
And that one loss to Tom Aspinall. Like, that's fucking crazy. Like, I don't care who you're fighting. You go six or seven and the best four fight organization in the world at 43 years old is insane. Mm-hmm. But, Josh, isn't he now tied for most wins? Um, let me double check. Yeah, he's tied with Cerrone and Miller. Isn't that crazy? There's a three-way tie and all those guys are going to fight probably again? Oh, they're all going to fight him again. I mean, Jim Miller doesn't have a fight book, but Cerrone might take the lead this week. He could, but is he? <laughs> Uh, we'll talk about it. We'll, we'll talk, talk about it. About it. Yeah. We're <laughs> talking about, we'll talk about it in a minute. But, yeah, I mean, as far as the rest of the card goes. I already goes, got you well, hyped up, didn't I? Yeah, I, I, I'm super hyped with that. I, I'm sorry, Josh. I didn't, mean to, I didn't mean to get you bricked on air. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I, got, I got a phoner, Angel. I got a phoner. I'm <laughs> rock hard with emotion right now. Anyways, um, yeah, go ahead and give me some other fights uh, from that um, – you see Vegas 53 card that you're looking to talk about, looking to recap. Oh man, you know I we need to highlight it. Very, this was devastating for the opponent, but I need to hand it. I need to highlight this guy because I mentioned him previously. We were highlighting the show. Joe Anderson Brito, man, win over Andre Feely, devastating finish near the end of the round, first round finish. I mean, dude, beautiful, beautiful finish. Sad to see Andre Feely go down like that, man, because he's a he's a guy I have a lot of respect for. Uh, for some reason, I I I, I like him a lot. I like his fight style a lot, and. Uh, He's really entertaining. He comes out to bang every time, and uh, he can talk, and he can he can fight. He can do both. So, uh, you know, I I enjoy him as a fighter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I I do too. And I, it was really hard to see him go out like that, man. He really was. Because I'm not sure if you remember. I mean, his last last fight was a uh, no contest. Um, yep. Sucked. It was, and it was a fight where he looked, dude. He that was the best he ever looked. And Daniel Pineda is no punk. Daniel Pineda is a fucking good guy, man. He's a very, very good guy. And Andre Feely was too – he was styling on him, styling and profiling. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, he was looking great, man. And uh, he hit him with the eye poke, end of the fight, and that sucked. Um, and so he waits like a year to get back in there, and he gets done in 41 seconds. And, and by the way, that's bef- – the Pineda fight, before that, he had the Bryce Mitchell fight, and he's the only person to ever test Bryce Mitchell. It was 1-1 going in that third round. So um, – yeah, man, rough one, dude. And Andre Feely's guy is only 31, but dude, like, he looked, I thought after that Bryce Mitchell fight, I was like, damn, dude, he's really taking a step up. And then he's beating the shit out of Nate, Daniel Pineda, and that eye poke happened, he just can't seem to get back on the right track. It really sucks. Yeah, it's, it's pretty sad. Pretty sad. Um, do you watch Darren Elkins versus Tristan Connolly? Dude, I'm sad. I, I missed a lot, man. I'm telling you, it was a busy night for me with everything. I was trying to keep up with everything. But I had a lot of fun, dude. Uh, I know it was a good one. I I know uh I know Derek Elkins actually had like a pretty sick game plan going into this. He did. He, he was the grinder, man. He was fighting yeah. in the clinch, yeah. doing some great dirty boxing. You know, um, he, it was sick. He switched it up a bit, which that's uh that's respectable, man. You know, you get you you know you gotta after his last fight, he he was like, yeah, nah, this damage shit ain't hit always, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um. Who did he fight last time? He fought uh, Cub Swanson. That's yeah, it. he fought uh, Killer Cub, yeah. Uh, Hall of, future Hall of Famer Cub Swanson. Sick finish by Cub. <laughs> yeah, sick finish. Dude, I, I, dude, I'm so – this is somewhat off topic. Cub Swanson, dude, I'm so happy that motherfucker's going to go in the Hall of Fame. Like, Oh, he's confirmed that, they're doing it? Well, yeah, because remember the the Dude Ho Choi fight's going to the Hall of Fame. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he'll be in the Hall of – maybe not himself, but his fight will be. Which yeah, I mean, well, they, they get recognized as Hall of Famers anyway. Like, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, obviously. Yeah, that makes me happy. So, yeah, shout out Cubs. I really didn't talk about that on air when it did happen. So, uh, do, you, do you think we'll make the UC Hall of Fame one day, Josh, with the podcast? Uh, we should. We should. Um, it'd be disappointing if we didn't. I think we're better than like some of the other UC podcasts that made it in the Hall of Fame. So, you know, <laughs> there, we're not. There's, there's not a lot of competition, thankfully. But thankfully, thankfully, um, we'll make it there eventually. Um, we are, you know, UC credentialed the podcast. Is, so I think we are. I think we we'll, just we we just had the unfortunate that the you know courtside sound off you know LLC hasn't wanted to you know fly us out to New York. Exactly. Or Vegas, the company or, credit card is. They said it's it's not. They're not. <laughs> there's not enough on there for us to get down there. And, you know, for both of us, process. you know, for one of us, yes. But Josh doesn't want to go alone. So. Oh yeah, of course, of course. I mean, I don't. Come on, man. I can't leave behind. You know. But yeah, you know, um, we were gonna go to New York uh, last year, but they, you know, they they just denied us, and it just happened. You know. I was trying um, to get it approved, and uh, yeah, no, it was just not it at the time. It should happen. It should happen. Uh, anyway, Christoph Jocko to defeat Gerald Mushart ended his uh, nice, nice three fight winning streak. I remember on fight week, Christoph Jocko said that he didn't, he didn't like fight, he didn't want to fight Gerald Mushart because he was a wet blanket. Um, he didn't <laughs> go out there and wrestle him. 
So that was interesting. It, it um, was it was funny how the fight went, right? Because Christoph Jocko is a guy that does a lot of wrestling, so what an odd thing for him to talk shit about. Like maybe, but you know, two wet blankets, Josh, on top of each other, like realistically, not like a fun mix. You know what I mean? No, 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 I agree. But you think Josh Mishra Sadi GM three is not even a wet blanket? No, no, no. He's one of those guys who will fight for a submission. Exactly. So that was really, really weird shit talk. But you know, not wrong a, though. Even like Jocko talk at times. He's a bit of a weird guy in general. Uh, Not to be mean, I, do, I like his fights, but... Weird, like, sussy for fun guy? Weird, or, like, what kind of weird? <laughs> I can't be the sussy for fun guy! <laughs> no, but anyways, um, just kind of a weird guy. Like, if I watch like, his interviews, it gives me, like, a weird vibe. It, he just and throws then, you off. Does he just throw you off? Is that what it is? I think that's it. I think he just throws me off. Is, is, uh, it, like, is it, like, the first time you ever heard uh, Anderson speak? <laughs> I bet you everybody was thrown off the first time they heard him speak. Oh, I'm sure. Um... Anyways, mo- moving on down. I, I, did you see my, my, uh, my tweet whenever I was in Romanov fought Chase Sherman? You're like, well, what was it? You're like, it's time it was, for. It was, it was, I was like, by the way, I, I'll tell you in a minute, but it was like, uh, it was K- Killer Grill about to pull the, pull off the biggest upset in UC history. Cause I was in Romanov was a minus 2200 favorite, which is the biggest. That's almost 1000 more than the next biggest. I think, uh, Holly Holm was a, uh, excuse me, Ronda Rousey against Holly Holm was a minus, 1250, I think. Is that so, the greatest ever in UFC history? Yeah, that was the record. <laughs> and then Romanov smashed that shit. Yeah, Romanov, dude, you gotta give it to Trey Sherman. He did last for a while on the ground. Yeah, he like, actually had a lot. He got it from his first two takedowns, I think, you know? But he was getting held on the ground, and, you know, he. But then yeah. he got mounted and it was all over. Yeah, he got that Americana and it's just game over. <laughs> but I went ahead and uh, tweeted Villano Girl about to spring the biggest upset in UC history. And by the way, as soon as as, as soon as I sent that, I already got the the other tweet queued up for when he lost. It was uh, it was uh, Chase Sherman has been released from the UFC. He no, lost. no, no, because and then it was like um, it was just like a head. It was like Booker T holding his head in his hands, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, I I knew it was gonna happen. That was just a joke tweet. I, there was zero chance that if I was gonna. Who knows? He could have landed that one big shot. You never know. He could have, you know. But Chase Sherman. That's the thing about Chase Sherman. It, it's unfortunate. Maybe maybe you cut them, Josh. Did you ever consider well, that? Chase, Chase is unfortunate because he doesn't have that one hitter quitter power. He's more of a he's more of a you know a volume guy, which is fine. But you know, yeah. against a guy like Romanov, that's rough. That's really rough. Um, but anyways, man. Yeah, unfortunate for him. As far as the rest of the card goes, and Francisco, uh, Francisco Figueroa scored a nice win. Uh, Shannon Young defeated Gina Mazzani. Um, you know, it was, it was a pretty fun card. I like this card a lot, honestly. But as fun as that card was, it's no match for this weekend. Well, it's, it's a pay-per-view, Josh. It's kind of hard to... Yeah, I mean, you, you know what I mean. You know, but I'm glad that we're finally back to pay-per-view, man. You see 274 going down for the Footprint Center in Phoenix, Arizona. The main Shout event. out. Charles... Du Bronx, Oliveira, the Shout UFC lightweight champion, taking on Justin, the highlight, Gaethje. Man, this fight is, uh, I fucking love this fight, man. I really, really do. If you look at this one on paper, stylistically, this one is has all the makings of a classic. Huh? Charles Oliveira on an insane win streak right now. Captured the title back in uh, May of last year with a win over Michael Chandler. He defeated uh, Dustin Poirier via <laughs> Sorier via submission. The Soy Boy Sorier. Soy Boy Sorier, according to one chaos. Uh, do you see actually his teeth got fucked up? Oh, wait, on God? Yeah, do you not see the picture of Colby after the monster attack? Um, I have to check that out later. <clears throat> yeah, he's, he's Colby Chaos Covington now. <laughs> um, and he went ahead, and, but anyways, back to Oliver. He submitted to Poirier in the third round, back in December. Uh, prior to that, we, one not one week, one week, one month before that, uh, Geechee picked up a winner of Michael Chandler, which gave him the title opportunity. Uh, prior to that, he did lose to Habib back in October 2020, but he is a former interim lightweight champion. Uh, man, this fight has a lot of heat on it. Um, both Geechee and Oliveira. Geechee has been talking a lot of shit. I don't it's know where, where it's come from. He's normally a very nice guy, but his last two fights, he's talked a lot more shit. I don't know if he's just like... He gives no fucks on it, dude. I think that might be it. I think that might be it. Um, which is good for him, honestly, you know? Um, maybe sometimes you need that, dude. Sometimes you need to just, like, be that asshole, you know? Like, in fighting, you know, you kind of need that extra confidence. And, like, being an, being kind of an asshole sometimes works. Like, you need to be an asshole. Not, not be an asshole in the sense of, like, you're going around and being an asshole to everybody. 
but an asshole in the sense of like asserting yourself. You know what I mean? Well, and it could be like a motivation thing. Like some guys, like some fighters see their opponents, like they gotta hate their opponent to get up for it. You know? That makes sense. You know? <clears throat> so maybe that's what Gage is doing. I don't know though. Regardless, um, this is a very interesting fight. I, I mean, I could see this one going either way. Um, obviously, it all is gonna come down to even even Justin. I saw him talk about. It, he's like. You know, he's going to have to walk through hell like Habib did, which I thought was a weird thing. I don't remember Habib walking through hell, but regardless. Uh, um, Habib said that was one he said that Justin hit hard. Did he? he did say that's that. That's true. Then again, Habib is super respectful of his opponent, unless it's Conda, though. True, but he was honest. Yeah, fair enough. But he was honest. He said, yeah, Justin's probably the guy who's hitting the hardest ever. Oh, yeah, there you go. But he, did, but, he never, but he never fought Iron Michael Chandler, so. He never, he never did. The um, true, the true American champ, who we'll talk about in a minute. But yeah, man, this is a very, very close fight. Very, oh, very right, excited. This card, holy shit! Yeah, very, very excited for this one. Give me your thoughts, Oliveira Gaethje. Give me your preview. Uh, Josh, I mean, this is one of the hardest fights we're gonna have to pick all year. I mean, we always have these during the year, right? Uh, let me look at the odds over while I'm on here, while I have it all pulled up. So. Oliver, a slight favorite, minus 165. This is, this is what I'm saying on topology. Mm-hmm. And a plus 140 slight underdog, Mike, uh, not Mike, Justin the Highlight Gaethje. The Very challenger close. From Greasley, Colorado. Well, fighting out of Greasley, Colorado. Mm-hmm. Uh, God, dude. I mean, no one's ever defended the title at 155 three times, uh, four times, Josh. I mean, that's, that's the biggest thing, right? If I, if I remember right, that's, that's one of the, the factors that everybody keeps mentioning, uh, mm-hmm. since the conception of this division, and this division's been around for a while now, Josh, no one's defended the title more than three times at 155. Uh, I mean, we talked about how this is one of the most competitive divisions. It's the perfect combination of speed, technique, style, strength. You know, you get all of it, right? Yeah. It's the best division in the UFC. Yeah. You know, you get, you get all around guys in this division from, from head to toe. And, uh, that's the one thing Oliver has to fight, dude. I mean, if he does this, he is... I mean, he's already cementing himself as one of the greatest 155ers of all the time. Uh, I mean, he's already pretty much done that. But by defending the title four times at 155, which has never been done before, setting a record. I mean, Josh. I mean, he's... Who's going to be title defense number two? He'd be title defense number two? Yeah. He'd be, <laughs> Poirier was his first title defense. Oh, was it? This is his third title fight. But it's oh. defense. Oh, yeah, you're right. That's why you got confused. I got confused. I was thinking ahead because there have been a lot of talks about it. Because then, if he were to win this fight, the next fight would be Islam. Yeah, and that would be the one where he. Can that would be the fourth time, and that that'd be, yeah. that'd be, that'd be pretty baller. That's that I, that's be. that's where I heard that conversation. Never mind. That's I heard that a while back. I mix it up. Regardless, though, he'd be tying for three, which is the most ever, and it'd be a pretty tough guy. The follow up mm-hmm. to this would be, you know, we'd be getting to some legacy shit at that point. Regardless, though, doubling back to where we were at. Still, I mean, yeah, this is where he ties it, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and it's a tough fight. Obviously, Justin is, I mean, you could show his highlights to anybody and they'll be like, holy fuck. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think out of the guys, out of every single guy in the UFC, he probably has the best highlight reel. Mm-hmm. I mean, there, I could, I mean, who's this competition, right? You know, the, the, like, he has, I mean, obviously there's guys who compete, but I mean, let's be honest, Josh, Justin Gaethje's highlight reels. Pretty untouchable at this point, I think. Uh, with all due respect to mm. everybody else, gotta stay humble out here. You gotta you stay know. humble. But uh, as far as my as, as far as what I think about the fight, I, I, Josh, I'm be ballsy. I, I'm, you know, I I might regret this, Josh, because I didn't pick him last time, but I'm picking him this time. I'm picking Charles Oliveira to defend the title and retain against Justin Gaethje. Mm. Uh, last time out, Josh, I picked against him. I thought Dustin Poirier was going to be the the, the, the true king of 155, I, I had said it. You know, he's the uncrowned king of 155 after he retired. I thought he was next for the title. I thought he deserved it. I thought he was going to get it. He ends up fighting Charles Oliveira. Gets submitted in devastating fashion, man. And, I, I mean, I was I was ready for it, Josh. I was ready for it. And uh, as far as uh, Charles Oliveira, man, I, I you know, have a heck of a time on this fight, man, because I think he's going he's gonna to have, have a hard time taking Justin down. He's gonna have a hard time on the stand up. He's gonna have a lot of trouble with those leg kicks, especially since he's very like he doesn't have a lot of like he doesn't do like a crazy amount of lateral movement, I feel. Mm-hmm. He's very like when he's walking you down, he's very just stationary, you know. He doesn't do like a lot of uh like like crazy like angle change ups on the stand up, which I think could be his demise in this fight. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, and some of that Justin hits like a fucking truck, you know? That's a big factor. In his hands and his legs. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, and he'll invest. He'll invest in the legs and then move up to, you know, move up the top. Uh, I mean, I'm worried, Josh. I think I'm, I'm very worried for Charles Oliveira, but, uh, I'm going to pick him, Josh, to retain. I, I could see the submission win. Uh, the decision is very unlikely for either one of these guys. I think this is going to be uh, for Charles Oliveira's submission. Char- uh, Justin Gaethje finish on the feet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. Um, this is going to be a uh, – it's it's going to be one of those fights where – I think we, we've kind of talked about this before with other fights where it's like it, it's so clear it's going to go one direction or the other. Like there's no way it's going to be like one of those knockdown drag outs back and forth. Like no, Oliver is going to submit this motherfucker. Or it's just <laughs> – he's going he's gonna to backpack him uh, or he's going to go ahead and get knocked out. Is by that Eddie Bravo? No, I mean, he's gonna get he's gonna get knocked out. He's gonna getting pa- uh, backpacking him. So, um, look, man, I'm gonna go to Oliveira. I'm gonna go and still. Um, uh, dude, uh, for some reason, Josh, like, and I'm sorry to cut you off there. Yeah, it feels oddly weird, but I don't feel like this is the correct pick. For some That's reason, fair. I mean, you and I'm picking, and I'm picking. Pick. No, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not changing my pick. Change your pick, motherfucker. You're talking shit. No, 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 no. I'm not changing it. You I, I, wait till I see you next time, Andrew. I have them on my pickums. I've, you know, I've, I've made oh, it's my picks. In. Yeah, it's locked in, Josh. I can't change. Oh, it okay, now. all right. You know what yeah, I mean? Well, yeah, I look, dude. I think Oliveira. <sighs> it's, it's just a hard fight, man. That's what it is. It's right? a very, very tough fight. But here's the thing, man. I think Oliveira throughout his career, he, he's lost via TKO four times. But he hasn't Same. been one hitter quittered in about a decade. Same, and that's, Josh. And I don't think that Gage is going to be the guy to do it to him. I mean, he is a solid chain at 155. He's actually never been T- yeah, excuse me, he's been TKO once at, one, at 155, excuse me, against Paul Felder back in the day. Um, but regardless, during the stretch, he, he has no problem walking through the fire in order to get the finish. Poirier landed some nice shots in that first round. But guess what happened? He got taken down and smashed in the second and submitted in the third. I think the same thing might happen here. I think Gage is going to land his shots. That's no problem. But unlike a lot of guys, the Habib problem with, with Gaethje, Gage, people are like, oh, you know, maybe Gage can keep it on the feet. He's a wrestler. And he did stuff a couple of takedowns. But, dude, Oliver just needs to get a hold of you. He doesn't need to get the takedown. Mm-hmm. You know? And this is kind of like the argument I remember. I, I still picked against Aljamain during his rematch with Peter Yaw, but I was like, he just needs to grab him. He needs to get a hold of him. It's a completely different fight. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, and same thing here, and I am picking him to get the win. I'm going to go and take Oliveira via submission. The fact that Gaethje still has a thing of like, you know what, man, you know, as long as the fight doesn't go to the ground, I'm good. I'm like, dude, how are you even, like, that's really, that's not really the mentality you want to have, though. You that's know a terrible, I mean? I mean, you're, like, he's admitted that he doesn't even train jujitsu, he just trains takedown defense. Like, he's talked about that. And it showed in the, whenever he fought Habib, Habib took him down and nearly submitted him with, like, seconds to go in the first round, and then he submitted him instantly when he got to the ground in the second. You know? Um, and it's a different style of submission and a different style of takedown, too, which is the other Correct. Thing. But the thing about Oliver is he doesn't even need to take you down, man. He just needs to get a hold of you. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take Oliver. just wrap you up. Yeah, you're not wrong. So I'm going to take Olivera, um via submission. I don't know what point in the fight, but I'm going to take Olivera via submission. Uh, Coleman event. Rose Nama Yunus. And Carla Esparza. This is a rematch of a fight that happened all the way back in 2014. December 2014, it was the, first, it was the fight to crown the inaugural USC Women's Strawweight Champion. It's insane to think about, based off of all their career up and downs, that they're going to be that they're fighting for the title eight years later. That's kind of wild to think about, and I think a lot of people don't even really, like, it hasn't really sunk in for a lot of people how insane that is. Uh, but they're doing it. Carla Esparza, this weird thing about she is a former champion. You know, she, she beat Rose. Uh, she dominated her via, you know, and getting the finish in the third round after battering her on the ground. She became the first ever strawweight champion. She ended up getting annihilated by Yoan in her first title defense, and she kind of had this up and down career where it's looking like she can be a gatekeeper and she's very easily forgot about as a champion until she finally, in 2019, she started putting it together. She's won five fights in a row. Vernon James, Roba, Alexa Grasso, Michelle Watson, Marina Rodriguez, and Jan Jonah. That last fight against Jan Jonah was a battering that got her this title fight. Rose Namajunas, you know the story. You know she ended up losing to Esparza, but since then she's just climbed her way back. She had her ups, she had her downs. She gained the title, she lost the title, and then she's regained the title. Coming off of that split decision winning with Shang Wei Li in November, um, I remember thinking she lost one, but she did end up pulling off the win via split decision. Yep. So Angel, very interesting stylistic fight here. 
Give me your thoughts on this one. I know that um, Rose is a pretty ha- pretty heavy favor going in. You think she's able to correct the wrong from eight look, years ago look, and look, defeat look. Carlos Barza? I'm, I'm, I'm just cutting it to you clean. Yeah. I I think Rose is going to win. The thing okay. is though, if if Carlos Barza doesn't say Michelle Larson for a second, if Carlos Barza takes her down, this fight is going to change really quick. Because mm-hmm. I'll tell you this, we saw Wei Li take down Rose, and we saw how that fight went. Rose trained wrestling, or better her wrestling, within a few months, and looked like that. Carla Sparza has been doing this wrestling shit for years. Mm. If Carla Sparza gets down Rose Nauman Unions, it's going to be significantly different than when Wei Li took down Rose. Mm. Let's just make that very clear right now. The Go issue ahead. is Rose Nauman Unions is not the fighter of what? You said eight years ago? Or how long ago was it? Six years ago? When she uh, fought eight Sparza? Years ago. Yeah. She's not the same fighter that she was when she fought as far as eight years ago. She's a significantly different better. Her stand up is significantly better. Her all around, just a better fighter. And her and I'm sure her, her wrestling has improved, but it's nowhere near the level of as far as the, you know what I mean? Yeah. And obviously it comes, you know, take that effect. You know, there's other specific stuff that we can get into that. Regardless though. I still pick Rose. I just do think though this fight could significantly change if Esparza is able to get those takedowns, walk through the walk through her, you know, crush the space, put her up against the cage, control her, avoid the damage, and win the rounds, tire her out. And we know, dude, Rose can gas. She can. And if she starts taking Rose down, it starts tying her and wearing on her and mm-hmm. wearing on her. And then you know, Rose is one of those men- one of those mental fighters. You know, we know that. You know, that's, mm-hmm. it's actually very evident with her, and it's not to, like, make fun of her or, like, you know, try to be wilder or anything. We were very well that her her mental game is very, you know, very important to her actual game, too. It applies. You know, if she starts losing the fights, does she start losing confidence? Does she start, you know, you know, she starts feeling tired? Does she start getting, you know, these flashbacks to the first fight? You know, does she start thinking, like, holy fuck, I've been here before, but damn, this shit sucks. You know, I can't do it. You know, does she start doubting herself, you know? Mm-hmm. All that things are going to play in a factor. Whether or not it does or doesn't, we'll see. But it's something that could occur in that fight. I am very confident in Rose. I think Rose will win. I think she could put up a striking clinic too. I think it'd be a very nice, a very bad night for Esparza. I think Rose would have to be very limited with her kicks, very selective, so Esparza doesn't catch those, take her down, and you know get on top of her, especially not let her pass guard. Yeah, you make a good point, and um, <clears throat> she's a very different fighter from when they went ahead and fought eight years ago. And I think that's clearly evident because like. They were both very young in her career. A lot of people point out, like, oh, you know, Rose was so young in her career. And that is correct. But she, you know, that was her, I think, fourth or fifth pro fight. And she had three or four fights in the house. As far as I think that was her ninth fight, I believe. Um, so they were both young in their career. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go and pick Carlos Sparza. You know I, something? I love this pick out of you, by the way. I'm going to go and pick Carlos Sparza. I love I this think, pick out of you. I think this girl has been slept on for so goddamn long. And, like, she's still only 34 years old. She was so young when she won the title. And I think the fact that she got, like, annihilated by Yana, that was arguably, I mean, it's one of those ones that commonly, it's commonly forgot. But, like, dude, Yana beat the dog shit out of her. Like, that was one of the worst title fight losses of all time. And after that, I remember she took, like, an extended break. And she was very, very inactive for a point in time. And, like, she was just kind of used as a gatekeeper. And, which is fine. There's no, There's no shame in that. But, like, She's been disrespected her entire run. Like, I remember after she beat Waterston, there was talk of, like, oh, maybe she'll get a title shot. Like, like this division's in a really weird place. And they just kept on giving it to other people. She went out beating Mina Rodriguez. They kept on giving it to other – they gave Wei Li a rematch for – I mean, I love Wei Li, but, like, <laughs> she only one. had – you know, I think that fight didn't make a whole lot of sense, the rematch. She used to go out and beat Yan Xiaonan. She demolishes her, bloodies her up, looked like a fucking horror scene. And yet they still were talking about maybe we'll give it to Maureen Rodriguez. Like like there was for some reason, like she just kept on getting passed over and there was even talk of her getting passed over for this fight. I think she's gonna make the most retail opportunity. I think that mentality is a big thing that goes into this. Rose is kind of a mental fighter, which we did talk about. I wonder how much of that pressure is on her knowing that she got battered the last time. Gosh, I'm really I'm really gonna get fucked this week. Charles Oliveira is really going to get beat by Justin Gaethje. Rose, I finally pick Rose, and Rose is going to lose. I'm just <laughs> fucking cursed, aren't I? 
I, I don't I think I think Charlie Alves is gonna win. I'm not worried about that one. I think this fight's very, very close. I'm gonna take Carlo to win though. I think I love this you know, pick out of you, by the way. This is one of my favorite picks you've made in forever. Yeah, I mean Whaley Whaley had a lot of success in the wrestling, and Whaley's not a wrestler by trade. Rose was able to threaten with submissions, which was which was fine, and that's kinda where she had like that that advantage. But Rose Carlos is no Sparza, like submission ace either though. No, and Carlos Barza is extremely underrated on the ground. She's very, very solid. The last time she was submitted was back by Megamu Fuji. And uh, Bellator 24 in 2010. Holy she's shit. very, very solid on the mat. Um, she's very, very good at the top pressure. She, she's actually kind of getting that point now. Where she's starting to actually, you know, a long time. There was a period of time where, shout out Christoph Jocko. Carlos Barza was a bit of a white blanket. You know, there was a times where she was just willing to value control above all else. Over her current winning streak, she's kind of like, you know what? I'm going to take this fight to the ground. I'm going to lay some fucking elbows into these girls. Like, she's doing more damage. I think when it comes to this fight, I think she's been waiting for a time for a, a long time. I think she gets it, dude. I think I don't think that she's like a better. I, this is going to sound weird. I don't because I think she's going to get her second win over Rose. I don't even know if she's a better fighter overall than Rose. I just think this is a terrible matchup for Rose. Like I really think it is. I mean, um, yeah, no, that makes sense. I agree with you, but at the same time, I feel like as far as had had slight improvements. I mean, you saw she's more active on the ground now as far as <laughs> trying to get to damage and stuff. You know. Correct, and I think she's. I think they both improved a whole lot. I think this fight's going to be very, very good on Saturday. I can see Rose winning. There's absolutely a path to victory. You know, she has very, very good movement. I can see her just staying on the outside, jabbing. As far as not really being able to get in and do much, that's absolutely a very, very that's clear what I'm path saying. to victory. Yeah, that's a clear path to victory. I, I think it'll, it'll be, it'll, this will be a, one of those fights, and and my one of my favorite phrases, Josh, when it comes to this, in hindsight. Yeah, it'll be very hindsight. obvious. I think I think we'll be like, well, in hindsight, yeah, we knew this was gonna happen, or it could have happened, you know? Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take Carlos Barza to pull off the upset and to regain the women's strawweight title. Which weird to think about, man. I remember when she lost that shit. I was like, oh, well, yeah, she probably grew down as one of the worst champs ever. Like that was just how bad that beatdown was, you know. And she took a long time off after that. Um, I think she can get it done though, and uh, you know, I think this this second title run for her, probably one of the more unlikely things in, in MMA history if it ends up happening. Happening. It's a sick story, um, though. It is a very, very cool story. So I'm going to go ahead and take all those bars to get it done. I think you get the victory. Moving on down the card. Lightweight fight. Um, both of these guys need a win to stay uh, in title contention. Way more, more than one, the other, though, Josh. Let's be honest. One way more than the other. But regardless, these guys are still ranked number five and number seven. Iron Michael Chandler taking on Tony El Kakui Ferguson. Um... Chandler is coming off of back-to-back losses. Obviously, he lost to Charlie Olives in a bid for the vacant UFC lightweight title. And then he lost to Justin Gaethje in a fight of the year contender at MSG last November. And Tony Ferguson, on the other hand, well, hit, well, Chandler's fights have been very, very close. He nearly won the Gaethje one. There's a clear path to victory, which you and I have talked about on the show, where, like, you know what, he's kind of fucked around in the last round rather than trying to, you know, pull off the victory, which led to him losing via decision. In that Charlie Olives fight, Haley knocked him out and had that round been 30 seconds longer, longer maybe Ch- Michael Chandler's UC lightweight champion right now. Um, that first round, I mean. But yeah, it's, a, it's a crazy world that Michael Chandler could be living in right now, right? Yeah, right. He could still be fighting Justin Gaethje now, too. Which is he's crazy. Still, hey, he might even get a title shot after this, but it remains to be seen. Regardless. Dude, what do you mean? He's going for Conor McGregor, dude. That's true. He does want that fight, but I don't know if it'll happen. I mean, um, that'd be a great fucking lead-up to that fight, by the way. Mm-hmm. If they did ever do that, I don't. I don't think they will, but I'd love to see it. Mm. Correct. Um, regardless, but well, well, Michael Chandler has had that those close fights where even if he's lost, I think he's even kind of raised his stock, especially the Gage one. He raised it in defeat. That was such a good fight, you know. It was, but man, I hated it. Yeah. No, I, I know, I know what you mean. But regardless, yeah, uh, Tony Ferguson is the exact opposite position. He's had three losses in a row, and they were. Hard to watch. Like, every single one. Like, you know, I guess he didn't take much damage in the Benil Zaryush fight, but he still nearly got submitted, and he got battered on the ground. Same thing for Charlie Allis. And Justin Gaethje beat the... It was like watching an autopsy on a person who's still alive. That's what watching that fucking Justin Gaethje fight was, dude. Like, he was so hard to watch. Um, Yeah, man. So he needs to win badly. And he's 38 years old. He's very clearly slowed. I know a lot of people hate this matchup. They talk about how it's extremely lopsided, so on and so forth. Do you think this matchup is? I mean, can can what are your thoughts on the matchup itself? Because I've seen a lot of people just hating on the matchup in general. Before you even give me your pick, tell me your thoughts on the matchup. 
I think it could be fun. I think it'd be fun. I think Michael Chandler can make it fun. I think Tony can make it fun. Uh, I just think this would be kind of – look, we've seen the last three Tony Ferguson performances, right? But we got to put it in kind of perspective, too. Justin Gaethje, challenge for the title. You know, he's fighting for the title again. Charles Oliveira, champ. Benil Daryush, basically one fight away from the title as well. You know? Mm-hmm. And granted, we're back at it again with Michael Chandler, but Michael Chandler, with the way his career's kind of gone and, you know, the victories he had, had, I mean, he's, you know, it's, it's looking like, uh, this matchup kind of makes sense right now. You know what I mean? But at mm-hmm. the same time, though, Michael Chandler hasn't looked bad. That's yeah. The scary part. Thing is, though, I'm okay with it. I think it makes sense. Uh, I think it's good for Tony. I think it's good for Michael. I think if, if either, when either guy wins, the other name will look really good on the resume for each other. You know, that's the other yeah. thing too. Because at the end of the day, these guys also care about the names they get. You know, the feathers they put in their cap. You know, uh, maybe some don't. They don't give a fuck. They just care about the title. But I think when you ever look back at it, you know, you'll be like, oh damn, you know, Tony beat this guy. Michael Chandler beat that guy. You know, when you think, when you look back at guys' legacies, you look at the guys they fought too. You know what I mean? Mm. So that's another thing. Uh, but I, I'm a fan. I think it'd be fun. I as far as how the actual fight's gonna play out, that's the thing I don't know, Josh. Mm-hmm. I don't know what, what Chandler's kind of game plan is going to be going into it. I don't know how Tony's going to come out. Granted, though, who the fuck ever knows how Tony's going to fight, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so f- for all fucking know, he comes out here looking like fucking Hoist Gracie or he comes out looking like Israel Adesanya, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. Or maybe he comes out looking like neither. Yeah. <laughs> or or maybe Tony just doesn't show up. No, <laughs> <laughs> maybe he pulls out on fight day. Who knows? Maybe yeah. he's John Cena. No, uh, regardless, though... As far as my pick, Josh, I am pitting Michael Chandler. I know that's gonna hurt a lot of people. I know a lot of people are gonna fucking boo me right now, but yes, I'm picking Michael Chandler for the victory. Well, there's nobody else to boo. I had to do it. Um, I know, I know, I know. Uh, fuck, okay. dude. This fight, a lot of people hate it. Here's the reality: a lot of people are hating this fight. He's like, "Oh my god, Michael Chandler's gonna fuck him up. Michael Chandler's gonna fuck him up." Tony Ferguson has lost to like the num- he lost to the champion. He lost to the number one contender. He lost to the number four ranked guy. That's where that's who he's lost to. He's lost to the cream of the crop. All right, the cream of the crop. That's who he's lost to. Some guys are on Shout the Papania. You. you know? Um, and he's looked bad in those. But this is really the fight where we're going to see if there's anything left in him. Because here's the thing. Stylistically-wise, this is a matchup that Tony should, should honestly win. You know? Like, if we're just talking purely about... Remember how Tony Ferguson was just two, three years ago? You know? He was a guy who took him to the ground to the ground. You're going to eat elbows off your, like while he's on his back. He's going to be throwing on submissions. He's going to come on strong. He might even give round one away. Round two and three, he's going to be coming for your fucking head, man. Like, he's going to be landing elbows, doing some crazy shit. This is a fight that, like, if this were two or three years ago, this is a perfect stylistic matchup for Tony Ferguson against Michael Chandler, right? Mm-hmm. The current state that we're in, we don't know how much he has left, especially on the feet, because a couple guys are taking him down. I think Michael Chandler is going to appease him on the feet. I think he's going to keep it on the feet, at least for the first round or two, you know? Um, we're going to see what he has left. I think we're going to see. Remember, these guys have beef going back to him. I'm not sure you remember the Houston press conference. They're talking shit back and forth. You know, he said Michael Chandler has Dana White privilege, you know. I, I love it, dude. There's there's already some – there's something there, you know. There's, there's something, something set there. up for us. And Tony's been quiet, dude. He's just been in the gym. He just locked himself in training for the last year. He hasn't fought in a year, remember. So we love that shit. Um, love that shit, bro. We're going to go ahead and get what I think this is probably the best time for Tony Ferguson. This is the best fight you can possibly honestly ask for him because if you look at the rest of the division, I think I don't think he beats too many guys in the rankings anyway. So, um, I am going to take Michael Chandler though. I think a lot of like I I provided like the contrasting point. I was pretty much just playing devil's advocate. I think Tony's done, dude. Like I think. Oh, you you think Tony's done, Josh? I think Tony Tony is done. Is like, he's done, dude. He, he's you think Tony's done? done. I think Tony's washed. I think I think Tony has been on a trip. Like people are freaking out because like, oh my god, the, the Gaethje fight ended him. I'm like, dude, I, that if you look back, dude, I remember thinking like his last couple of fights were against Pettis and Cerrone that he won, right? I remember thinking in those, I'm like, Tony looks a bit slower, and that was after he tore his ACL tripping and, on the corner. And granted, how did those guys look after those fights? Not too long. Well, that's after. well, that's my, they didn't look very good before it either. <laughs> <laughs> That's true too, but what I'm saying is they they went hard fast after those fight after that fight though, not as specifically yeah. after that, but not too long after that, both those guys kind of took a deep dive. Yeah, and I get that argument. I get that argument, but um, no, but what I'm saying is he was part of that group too. You know what I mean? Like yeah, he, 
he's in that same category as those guys, and the way they've gone, does that mean Tony's going to go down that same path too? You know what I mean? Yeah. That's yeah. Kinda, well, I mean, that's kind of what I'm angling at. You know, I, I mean, I don't know if I explain it kind of weirdly. No, I, but. I'm pretty sure I get what you're saying. But, like, I thought Tony's been no, on. No, you like don't, a, Josh. No, you don't. No. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Tony's been on, a, like, a downward turn since 2018. Just because, like, he, he was able to come back and go ahead and get some solid wins after tearing everything in his leg when he was 35, which is really, really solid. But I remember thinking, like, he tore his ACL in, like, April, and he was back fighting in, like, November. Like, I remember he rushed back to get back to the title so quickly. And I remember thinking at the time, I'm like, that's going to hurt him in the long run. And, you know, I don't know if that had such a huge effect because he tore so everything he in his leg and rushed back from it. Probably did, though, you know. Dude, but, and he's had his limbs fucked up, dude, like, from fucking – like, he should have tapped Oliveira. He guaranteed, yeah. And then Darius too, dude. They both had him fucked up. Like his arm is like, like there's no way he didn't tear some shit in there, dude. After his fights, guaranteed. And I think this is a fight where it's like, this will sh- this will tell us if he has anything left. Because I think Michael's gonna trade him. But at the same time, it's, I really don't think there's anything left. You know, even- you know what the worst possible outcome in this fight is? Yeah, Tony gets knocked out. Because that's a very real possibility. Because Tony has never been knocked out. Yeah. That's a scary thought. Granted, this is a 38-year-old Tony Ferguson, too, that we're talking about at this point in his career. Mm-hmm. We do need to accept the fact that he has probably aged. Mm-hmm. And I feel like a lot of people don't want to accept that fact. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, if people are, people are pointing to, like, oh, you know, he only lost after getting wrestled. I'm like, dude, do you, you guys remember how Tony Ferguson was just a couple of years ago? The way that he countered wrestling with, like, throwing elbows on his back, throwing up submissions. He's, like, he's at that – there's. I remember whenever Tom Woodley was fighting near the end of his run, I, I remember people were like, just let your hands go. And it was like, there's a point whenever a fighter gets so washed that they, they just won't throw. That's the biggest sign. It's like, of that you're like kind of done as a fighter. Like, you're asking guys to do something that they physically, that there's like a mental block in there, but they can't do anymore. That they're you, not going to go forward and throw punches. They're not I mean, going to go ahead. You can kind of reference that though, Josh. I mean, let's, let's overream, right? To an extent. <laughs> you saw him running. Like literally running, you know. What I yeah, mean? but at least I mean, Overeem was throwing. He was he was doing some weird shit, but he was still throwing punches. Remember, like, I mean, you're right. He was still standing trade, but it was not the move, though. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that just some guys deal with it better than others, you know. Um, and I get that, but still, my G. Yeah. Um. Anyways, I just think it's a really rough. I. I I'm gonna take Michael Chandler. I think it's gonna be easy for him. I think Tony actually does get knocked out. I think that he's gonna go out there and blow some Josh, early. Dude, you're 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 ballsy this week, Josh. I'm I'm very very ballsy this week. I'm not only I mean, granted, Chandler's a pretty good favorite. I don't know about knockout wise. Tony has not been knocked out since ever. He's never yeah, been knocked never, out. Never. Yeah, I told you he's never been knocked ne- out. Jeez, I thought he got knocked out once on the regional scene. Never mind. Nope, never. Um, never been knocked out. Doesn't know how it feels. Yeah, that, I'm going to go and take Chandler, though, be a finish. Um, and then over up the card, we have two old guy fights, uh, which... Two old <laughs> that's parts. That's not a bad thing. <laughs> no, that's good. That's not a bad thing. I like when the UC does these matchups. I'd much rather see them fight each other than, each, than uh, get some young dudes, you know? Um, anyway, first up, Shogun Hua over to St. Fru. Um, this is actually a rematch of a fight that they had all the way back in, let me double-check, 2014. So, uh, eight year difference there. That first fight, o- OSP knocked him out in 34 seconds. Um, both these guys, it's actually kind of crazy to think about because obviously everybody talks about like how Shogun been finished and Shogun finished, Shogun has been finished like physically wise since honestly probably 2011, but yeah, he just, <laughs> he just keeps on fighting, keeps on winning somehow. Um, he did lose to Paul Craig last time out, but he fired part of that. He was on, he'd won like six of his last seven fights or something like that. Um, OSP, bit more rough. He's been experimenting at heavyweight. Uh, he missed weight for his last time at light heavyweight against Jamal Hill. Uh, he has three laws in his last four fights. I mean, you yeah, know, interesting fight here. You know, who do you got in this one? Hey, this is the battle of the, he should have retired like four years ago, right? <laughs> uh, look, for OSP though, you do gotta give him the benefit of the doubt, right? He decided to experiment at heavyweight. He was like, maybe, you know, I'm older now, it's slower. Let's put on some extra, you know, let's, let's not cut weight. Let's, let's, you know, let's, let's not worry about that cardio and shit, you know, as much. Let's, let's see what goes on. Not a very smart decision from what we've seen. Heavyweight was not the move. Granted, though, some of it was on shorter notice, but at the same time, 
even at light heavyweight, you know, not the best either. But I feel like at, I feel like they've given him a lot of younger guys, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's the other thing. I think OSB has also had the not the benefit of getting like super. And it's not going to, you know, and obviously we want to give these guys fun competitive fights, but I'll word it as it should be, not favorable matchups. And when I mean favorable, I'm not saying in the sense of like easy. What I'm saying is this is a fair matchup. These guys are at a similar level in their careers uh, at this moment in time, you know, but we, he has not had that in my opinion. Uh, I think he's, I, I feel like he's faced a lot of young competition and I feel like they've kind of pushed him a lot. The, the, and they've used the name. Now, though, I think I feel I feel like he's gonna get his revenge, Josh. I think he's gonna get his revenge from a few years ago. I feel like he's gonna come back to two hundred five. He's gonna come down. He's like, you know something? I'm gonna get this one back. I feel good. I, I had a good, you know, he's gonna, he's gonna be focused. It's a pay per view, big money, main card, big money. I, I just got a feeling he's going for that crypto bonus. Oh yeah, Shogun is going for that crypto. Um, you know, this is actually an interesting fight, man. I think this one is a. Uh, Everyone ever got announced, everybody's like, oh my god, Shogun is... This happens every single time Shogun has a fight announced, though. Everybody's like, oh my god, he's so old, he's so washed, which he is. But yeah, he just keeps on winning fights somehow. Um, Odds-wise, OSP's a pretty heavy favorite. Um, I'm going to go and take OSP. Which makes me sad, because I'm a huge Shogun mark, you know? I love that guy, but I'm also a big OSP guy, and I think that... Um, you like those pride highlights. You like when you stomp on people, don't you? you god damn to. right, dude. Oh my god, those old fried days, man. The, 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 what is it? What tournament? I don't, it wasn't open weight. It was like a middleweight Grand Prix when he knocked out Overeem and Arona. Oh! Knocked his out brother, Arona. his brother, he had a brother that fought too, right? Uh, oh my god, I can't remember his name. Mar- <sighs> Shit, I can't. But he, but Marilla, he had a brother that fought. Marilla, Marilla. Yeah, he had a brother who fought in Pride too. Also a savage. Yeah, also a savage. He knocked out, I mean, I've always maintained, like, the greatest run in MMA history. There's a lot of there's a lot of good ones you could throw out there. Max from a couple of years ago, Connor's run in the UFC, John's run to the title, and subsequent title defenses. I think Shogun's run from like O three to O five in Pride is probably the greatest ever. You know, he knocked out Rampage. He beat Nogueira. Knocked out Overeem. Knocked out Arona. Had a couple other wins in there too. Savage. Um. Yeah, but that happened 15 years ago. I'm going to take OSP. I think he's older. He's deceptively old. He's 39 to black don't crack. He don't look that old. Um, no, baby. Yeah, he doesn't He doesn't look old at all. He still looks really, really good for his age. Um, I just think this one, like, on the feet, man, I really think Shogun for his last few fights, is, he's used his grappling, which is a solid game plan for him. But I think he's not going to take OSP down. OSP's a big boy ever since he's been fighting in heavyweight. He's been cutting a shit ton of weight. Granted, he's been, he's been big a lot heavyweight for a while now, but... You can tell he dick. put on a lot more mass. Um, and I just think, like, OSP has that, like, he, he he's not really afraid to throw. I think he still has some nice power, though, man. That Alonzo Menafield knockout happened not that long ago. It's, he's he has a solid power, man. We take OSP. Um, opening up the main card, another old guy fight. Donald Cowboy Cerrone. This is, a, this is the Battle of the Bonus King right here. Donald Cowboy Cerrone. Hey. Uh, he's moving down to lightweight for the first time since 2019. He's taking on the king of Massachusetts, Joe J. Lau Lozon, back for the first time since October 2019 to knock out win over Jonathan Pierce and a win that's aged really, really nicely. Um, yeah, man, both these guys, Joe is 37, Cowboy is, let me get his age real quickly, he's 39. Two older guys. But look, dude, on paper, this has all the makings of a of a stylistically really fun fight. Go ahead and uh, give me your picks on this one. Uh Josh, you know, I, I gotta, you know, I gotta pick one for the front of the podcast. No, it's kidding. <laughs> Not front of the podcast, but uh, you know, this this fight could be fight of the night here, Josh. I have a weird feeling these two old guys, these two old boomers. <laughs> I love saying, you know, I, I I love saying it. I can't deny it, Josh. There's something funny about it. <laughs> Are gonna come out here and bang, dude? I feel like they're gonna come out here. Be fine for that bonus. We're gonna have some flashbacks to, you know, the mid late two thousands. You know, you're gonna get some certain kind of vibes in this fight, man. Uh, you might get some flashbacks and shit. Some flashbacks to Nom, Josh. I kid you not. Uh, in this one, uh, just know I triggered some people out there, but you know, fuck it. Yeah, fuck it. You know. Yeah, uh, but yeah, dude. No, I, I think. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna do it for the culture, Josh. I'm picking J Lo. J Lo, I respect it. Um. Yeah, I'm also going to go ahead and take Lowe's on here. Joe looked really, really good his last time out, which kind of made it, like, 
you know, I was like debating if he should retire after that. I want to know he was too, you know. I'm, so, uh, dude, I'm surprised he's coming. I mean, I guess this makes sense. It was the, I mean, it was the perfect win, though. I mean, it was a knockout win in a minute in in Boston. Like that was the way, right? A really good guy too. You know, Jonathan Pierce has been undefeated since that fight. Like, he's he's gotten three wins in the UFC. And instead, he's going to go to Arizona and fight Cowboy. Yeah, this one does make sense from like a legend's point of view. But um, do you think they both retire? Like right after this fight? Uh, you know, it's possible. Wouldn't the perfect ending be a knockout, drag out war, draw? Yeah, I think it would be a nice ending, but I'm going to go ahead and take Joe be a pretty easy knockout, actually. Damn, Josh. Did my yeah, I mean, look, like so, oh, here's the thing, right? Like, Cowboy has what Tony has, where, like, he's been through a lot of damage. He doesn't really throw. I'm not sure if you remember that fight where, like, he went ahead and, um, his last fight against Alex Morono. Yeah. And, like, Cowboy just did nothing for the first five minutes and got annihilated. Like, he just, Cowboy's always been a slow starter, but as he's gotten older, it's gotten even worse. You know, under those bright lights too, Josh. He struggled and maybe going down a lightweight is what he needs. But I'm gonna go and take Joe Lozon to get the win here. I think there's a possibility both guys retire after this. Both of them spoke about it a lot, so that'd be, that'd be pretty epic—a double, a double uh, retirement. Which yeah, would, be is gonna be happy for one and sad for the other. But hey, man, that's how that's how life is, and that's how this career is. That's true. That's the way. Hey, that's the way it goes sometimes. You don't want to see it, but hey, that's how it be. Um. As far as the prelims go, give me, go ahead and give me some fights you're looking to talk about. Oh, man, uh, we got to go down one, Josh. Uh, we need to highlight him. I mean, he came back around. They, the UFC decided to give him a second chance. And Andre Fiala, man, I, I said it. Andre Fiala is a good fucking dude, dude. They, they just came in on short notice, and they gave him Michelle Pajaya, who's now ranked. And they brought him back. They gave him Miguel Baeza. Fucking impressive performance. And now he's welcoming UFC newcomer Cameron Van Camp, which I don't know a lot about. I don't know anything about this guy, but decent looking record. Is on a nice little win streak coming to the UFC. We'll have to see. Maybe he'll surprise us. Yeah, he might. This fight just got like this fight just got broke like uh, only a week or two ago. Like I mean, yeah. it got added a week or two ago, I believe. It's a super late ad. Um, Shout out to them though for accepting. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he fought in not um. What's the local promotion by here? It's Shamrock. Shamrock FC. Yeah, I think I think he fought in Shamrock FC, but don't quote me on that. Cameron Van Camp? Yeah. I'm on I'm pretty it. sure. Uh yes, he did. He actually lost here. Yeah. Oh yeah, I looked it up right now. Yeah, he fought Bobby Volker, who is from KC. So. He fought Austin Hubbard too. Yeah, he's 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 fought some good dudes. Um regardless, yeah, this should be a really fun fight. Dude, the fight that I'm looking most look forward to it Randy Brown, Chaos Williams, sounds like a fucking banger, man. Oh, that sounds man. like a great fight. I thought that was a tough fight for Randy Brown, if I'm going to be honest with you. It is, but, dude, Randy Brown has been improving a lot lately, man. He has. I mean, uh, four wins in his last five, and even that Luke fight, he was having a lot of success before we got caught, you know? It'd be like that, though, with Luke. Yeah, I was about to say, that's pretty much how Luke does. Everybody, fair enough, to be fair, you know? Um, yeah, regardless, uh, Macy Chase on. Norman Dumont, a rare women's 145 bout. That division will not die. Banger. For some reason. Uh, Probably never should, die. It should be a fun, it should actually be like a really, really fun fight. I think Norman Dumont is, is like deceptively a really great fighter who's just like in a weird place with like weight classes. Like, mm-hmm. she's pretty solid. Um, she's a stud. Yeah. Brandon Roy Val taking on Matt Schnell should be fun. It should be a fun fight at 125. Blagoy Ivanov is back against Marcos Rogerio de Lima. Uh, Marcos, dude, interesting guy. I mean, he's a guy who's been in the UC since 2014, and he's like, so, like he's worked his way up to fighting a top 15 guy, which would be fun. Blagoy is back for the first time since May of 2020. Um, he had those two split decision losses back to back, which just were rough. Um, your girl, Tracy Cortez, is back. I know you're excited about that one. Um, <laughs> She's taking on Melissa Gatto, which should be fun. Francisco Trinado, Danny Roberts should be a lot of fun. Isn't that crazy? Huh. Trinado, 43, still going. Still very good, too. He's coming off a win over Dwight Grant. Dude, in his last, what is that? One, two, three, four, five. Last five, he's four and one. This guy's yeah. 40. He's fucking good. <laughs> dude, there's a world. I remember, like, that, dude, 2014 to 2016? What the fuck? Like, you look at his record, it's pretty fucking insane, Josh. 
Yeah. He never fought for a title either, did he? No, and he never even really fought. Like they kind of, they kind of did that thing that they do with like Brazilians who don't speak English sometimes. They'll like, they'll kind of age him out. They'll like they won't really let him fight top competition. You know what I mean? Yeah, they, that's a pretty popular thing you see people do from time to time. They did him dirty, man. They did, they him, did. him dirty. Him mm-hmm. and his son Sour, two guys, got done pretty dirty. He's been, and he's been since the Ultimate Fighter Brazil season one, twenty twelve. Yeah, officially since 2012, he had his debut. Uh, that's crazy, man. He's been with the UFC forever, and he's this man's 40. This man's this this man could have grandchildren now. Like that's that's not like that's a possibility, and he's still fighting. Yeah, right. Yeah, man, he's still very very solid. Um, yeah, a fight I'm actually really excited for. It should be a lot of fun. Uh, Ariane Canelosi taking on Lupita Godinez. Um. Yeah, man, Lupita, one of the one of the more fun fighters who kind of like made her name out of nowhere by like fighting like super quick turnarounds, like having three fights in like a month and a half. Um, one, two of them, which is even crazier. She, Arlie, she just Arlie, had to slow down. Yeah, right. I remember after her whenever Loma looking be like she was in the corner and after round two she's like, guys, I don't think I can fight next week. Like it's just like just like just have a lot of humor about hey, it. Hey man, she made her money though. She made her money real quick for the year. She made a person salary almost in that year, probably, dude. That's true. That's true. Um, yeah, man, should be fun. And Ariane Carlosi is just a little monster who just walks forward and does crazy shit. I remember her fight? Uh, I think it was the first fight uh, post COVID. And like, I think it was that Jacksonville card in two sixty one. I can't remember who she fought, but that fight was insane. So I've been a fan of her since that. So, yeah, man, uh, I like this card a lot. I like this fight a whole lot. I like this card a whole lot. Um, yeah, but it's not the only MMA we got this weekend, Angel. I know we, we got more, dude. Holy fuck! <laughs> damn right we do. We have more MMA and boxing. Um, Holy Bellator, fuck! <laughs> Two eighty from also known as Bellator Paris going down from the Aircords Hotel Arena in Paris, France. Uh, main event. We is we rematch. motherfuckers. We we. Baguette. Um, Ryan, Whoa, Josh. No, Ryan the Master Bader taking on Czech Congo in a rematch of their fight that happened in September 2019. That one ended an accidental eye poke while Bader was beating the shit out of him. Uh, for, uh, after that, uh, Congo has picked up a winner for Scary Gay Tonov. He also lost a split decision to Tim Johnson, but it's all good. Uh, Ryan Bader, ha- after that fight, went back down to light heavyweight, had some mixed success, but he came back up to heavyweight, defeating Valentin Moldovsky in January of this year. Um, yeah, man, interesting fight. Two two older guys, Congo looking to become belt for heavyweight champion at the ripe age of 46 in his hometown of Paris. Give me your thoughts on this one. It's crazy, man. Those, those genetics are something else, aren't they? <laughs> oh, yeah, it's the genetics, all right. I wish that you know. I hope to have, hope to look like Chen Congo when I'm 45 or whatever. Hey, look, dude, you just gotta you gotta be sure to eat that uh that chicken and rice. You'll be good eternally, right? Just eternally and work out every single day. <laughs> just work out, Angel. That's it. God, take and, your vitamins, you know, and fight. Be a fighter too. Be a professional fighter too. <laughs> yeah, learn learn French. Learn, then learn you'll really French. be black, and then you'll really be Chen Congo. <laughs> then I'll really be Chen Congo. <laughs> Uh, regardless though, Josh, I mean, what a fucking banger, right? Like, let's nice be fight. honest. This yeah. is this is this is the fight to make a heavyweight right now in this division. It makes the most sense. Um, tough fight for Ryan to go back to. I do think you kind of did Ryan dirty though, coming back in Chet Congo's backyard. Ryan being champ. I mean, shouldn't it have been in you know back in the states? Come on, he, he, they didn't want to do it well, back. I mean, didn't Ryan just find his hometown? He did, but I'm pretty sure he did. Right? They did that in Arizona. Yeah, he fought in Phoenix. On Phoenix, but come on, bro! Like he is the defending champ, you know. Like they didn't have to do it in France, you know what I, I mean? I don't know, man. I think it makes more sense. If Belter was going to go back to France, this fight makes a lot of sense. It's cool though because they do give Czech like the, the light, and they give France, you know, now the MMA is legal there, a big event, right? Yeah. And if Calvin goes to win, obviously big W for you know France, right? Yeah. And he gets beat an American, so you know, it just works out greatly. But mm-hmm. as far as matchup wise, Josh, I think Ryan's better. Look, I'll, I'll, I'll put it simply: Ryan Bader is back home. Ryan Bader's where he should be. He's at two sixty five. He has an amazing skill set for his weight class. He has uh, the talent he needs. Obviously, we've seen it, and uh, he's coming over winning this fight, man. I mean, look, uh, when he had his first. Sorry, when he had his first run at heavyweight, and you know everything went down, and you know it was the, it was the Grand Prix, right? Yeah. 
over on the Grand Prix. He was killing it, dude. And this is when he had he had just made the change, right? Because he never fought a heavyweight before that, right? Yeah, correct. It was it was his first time fighting a heavyweight when he fought in uh, the Grand Prix. Yeah, and uh, and he already he had fought the Phil Davis before that, and then he uh, and then when he fought in the Grand Prix, or no, it was it was Lindsay Well, whatever. I can't remember what fight it was. Regardless, though, he it was King Mo. That's who it was, right? Uh, no, he fought King Mo at heavyweight. That's what I'm saying. That was the heavyweight fight. Like that was the initial one. Oh, that was yeah, that was his debut. Sorry, that was the debut at heavyweight. Looked fucking solid, man. Like right. you know, yeah. Trans- and then he he went in. I he he beat Fedor. <laughs> that hurt. I don't know what you're talking about. That uh, fight never happened. I don't remember that. Uh, <laughs> fuck. Right, and regardless, about. heavyweight looked really good. And then for some reason, he's like, you know something? I'm just gonna have all success at this weight class, and I want to cut back down to 205. Uh, granted though, that's that was for dual champ status at the time though, right? That was the opportunity that was given Correct. to him. Yeah. And didn't work out. Which, look, shit happens. He wanted to chase this, you know, this kind of, you know, this, this accolade and I get it, right? Mm-hmm. But at his age, at this point in time, heavyweight was the move and he looks great at heavyweight, man. I mean, he probably should have always been a heavyweight, you know? To be honest with you, uh, Coming in at 2.30, kind of being a hybrid heavyweight, he's capable of wrestling, good, d- decent enough stand-up, can pressure a guy, and once he gets you down, it's a tough night, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I'm, I'm almost curious what would have happened if he would have been a heavyweight sooner, you know? I wonder how those fights would have gone when, uh, back in, you know, back in the UFC. And even early on, even early on a belt, if he would just sort of start a heavyweight, how things would have turned out. It doesn't matter because he got into it pretty quick after, mm-hmm. but, uh, he's where he needs to be, and I think he's gonna, he's gonna come out here and show us why he's back at heavyweight and why he's the champ right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, I look. I wanted them to make the Fedor fight and wanted them to make a Fedor rematch with Bader. Um, but if they weren't going to do it, I thought this fight made the most sense. Otherwise, I mean, especially in France, I'm pretty cool with that. Um, yeah, man. I mean, it's it's going to be a good fight. I think it's going to be a pretty pretty clear Bader win, though. I mean, at least if the first fight to go off of granted, it was only four minutes of action and a whole lot you can really take away from that. Uh, but he was he's beating him up, and then an eye poke, which really didn't look like he actually hit the eye when it ended the fight. So I'm gonna go and take Bader here. I like Congo's uh, his old man run has been very very fun. Uh, I do think it's gonna be a rough matchup for him. Um, Coleman event just got switched. Sadly, Melvin Manhoff had to pull out because he beat the ass of a couple of robbers. Um, Is this facts? You didn't hear about this? No, but shout out Melvin Manhoff. Hold on, let me no, let me set the scene for you, okay? By the way, Melvin I was I was I was aware yeah. of the uh, opponent change. I just didn't know why it occurred. Okay, so here here's the story. Okay, Melvin Manoff. There were apparently some guys who were targeting his home while he was out of town. I guess like a neighbor told him about it. Oh, and, and then, he had seen like some shit. Yeah, and then they came back around like a couple oh, like a couple days later, but this time Melvin was home. So he goes outside, tries to get these motherfuckers. Three of them. They try to drive away. He performs a pit maneuver to stop the car. He goes, and then they, he tells him, get out of the car. They won't get out of the car. He punches through the window like a fucking superhero, and then he gets them out of the car, throws them out, and detains them until the police arrive. Is there footage of this, dude? There's not, but you can look up the story. That is badass. And, um, it's just absolutely badass. And uh, he had to pull out of the fight because he hurt his hand when he punched through the window. Um, Who gives we, a fuck, right? right? That we shit is awesome. Get, yeah, that shit is awesome. And we're getting a pretty decent fight. Uh, Yo Romero is going to be taking on Alex Pelosi, who is 10 and 1, um, coming off of three straight wins inside the Bellator cage. Interesting fight. I don't, it's not exactly the one that everybody was hoping for, but Alex Pelosi is still a solid guy, 30 years young, and looking to make his name in light heavyweight. Give me your thoughts on this one. Look, Alex Pelosi is a stud. I'll be honest with you. I think he's a good fighter. I think this is a tough fight for him, though, dude. Might especially be a little, on short notice. Yeah. Especially on short notice. I think it might be a little, a little too soon. I'm being quite honest. Yo Romero's, uh, I think Yo Romero, Yo Romero could take this out really quickly, man. If he's explosive from that first round, he could put you out really quick, man. Uh, I know the, the 205, like, experiment hasn't been, like, super amazing so far, but it's only done one fight and it's a split decision loss to Phil Davis. And obviously Phil Davis is, like, a fucking stud, you know? So, uh, it makes sense, right? But for Alex Pelosi, man, a young guy like this, fighting a monster like you will, uh, I don't know how it's going to turn out, especially on sore notice, man. I'm, I'm going to have to go Yo Romero. Like, I've seen Pelosi's fights. He's a good guy, but I don't think this is going to work out for him this time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. I think if this fight, Yo, I think is obviously past his prime. 
guaranteed. Um, at the same time, though, if I'm not even pick Alex if he's coming in with an actual training camp, but he, he took this fight a week, not even a week ago, man. Let me actually see. It had, when he, it, it, it had to been dazed. It had to been when dazed. he pulled out. This fight was announced. This fight was announced four days ago. Yeah, that's so, like no time, dude. He's gonna have a I shitty know. weight cut too. Yeah, that's a rough one to take on super short notice. I, maybe they had him tabbed already because the Melvin thing happened a month ago. That's possible, but oh, then yeah, maybe. But then, I, yeah. that I don't know that for sure. Apparently, he Melvin just pulled out, so I don't know. But the injury happened a month ago, so maybe he's trying to fight. Maybe we we don't know based off of what we know. It's looking like he took his fight on four or five days notice. So but for all we know, we could have had a, like a few weeks to prepare though. So it might not be a shitty weight cut though. It is It is possible. It is possible. Uh, I am going to go ahead and take Yoel, though. I just think on short notice is a rough fight for him. I think Yoel is the better prepared guy. Um, I think he knows that he needs this win. He's going to go out there and probably just – I don't know, man. I think he's in a weird place. I think Alex Bozzi has a it's, – it's not going to be an easy matchup for him. So I'm going to go and take Romero uh, just because – mainly because of the notice. Like, I like Alex Bozzi a lot. I think the kid's a gamer. I say he's – I say the kid. He's, he's 30 years old. But he, he – He looks really young, though. Stuff. Yeah, he is very, very solid. And if this were like a normal fight, I'd probably take him. But on short notice in France, that fight's going to be a bitch. I'm going to go ahead and take Yoel. Um, anyways, as far as the rest of the card goes, what are some of the, what are some of the um, other fights you're looking to talk about? Uh, we were talking about it in the green room, actually, Josh. I highlighted Lorenz Larkin, man, still doing the damn thing. Taking on one Kyle Stewart, uh, second fight into the main card. Uh, mm. uh, look, man, I mean, he, he this guy's a long-time, you know, commodity in the MMA world, and he's still doing the thing, and he's he's not even, he's just 35, man, not like, not at old at all. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, maybe nearing the end of his career, right, depending if, you know, he decides to go in that direction, but he's still out here, man, and he's, he's on a little win streak, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, he's, uh, He's a guy that, I mean, we talked, we did talk about in the green room, that Baltimore was throwing a shit ton of money around back in like 2016, 2017, and he was a really big pickup at the time, and he hasn't actually worked out the exact way they hoped, but he's finally hitting that stride. I remember like he, after like 29 years, like, oh shit, this dude really might fight for a title, and then he took off two years, and then he had that Rafael Caballo fight where it was way closer than it should have been. If he gets a big one here, he might be fighting for a title, so who knows. Um, I'd really like to see him in, um, or boy, go out and kick out Nassasi. I'd like to see that fight, but that could that could be a um, banger. It would be, but he does have to take care of business here first. So we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, man, this is you know it's a little bit different than most built for cards when they go overseas or they go to like the UK or Ireland or something. There are a couple of names that you will recognize on here. Uh, most notably, Pedro Cavallo is going to be on the prelims. There's some other guys, T-Ball Goti, who I believe former UFC veteran. Yeah, correct. Former UFC veteran, he's on a three-fight winning streak now. He's his Bellator debut. Uh, Soren Bach. Weirdly enough, I think that's the weirdest one, to be honest with you. I think the weirdest part is that he's so far down on the card to me. And who he's fighting, too. Yeah, he's fighting 17-12-1 Charlie Leary out of the UK. He's 39. Mm-hmm. So this is a really, really fucking weird fight. So, like... I mean, Soren Box legit, dude. I mean, well, you know I'm looking at it now, Josh. He was supposed to fight Saul Rogers. I just, I'm oh at, yeah, that's right. I forgot he pulled out. My bad. Yep, I'm looking at it too. Yep, just found out. Okay, Chris. I put in that's okay. That's all right. I'm glad you just saw the card then. It makes a little bit more sense. I guess I just wanted to get him one in. They're like, "Yo, guys, who's we'll trying to fight Soren Bach?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, this makes this makes a lot more sense now. So, and someone was like, Charles Leary's like, "Yo, am I getting paid or what?" No, that's okay. <laughs> Charles yeah. Leary's about to shock the world, Josh. Hey, I mean, we'll see. Charles Leary is only a mine a plus three fifty under moderate underdog. What? What? Say that again. Say that again for the people. A plus three fifty moderate underdog. Plus three fifty yes. against fifteen and one Soren Box. Yeah, Soren Box. And he's minus five hundred. And. Charlie Lear is taking the fight on short notice after getting knocked out last time out. Yeah. I just... Yeah? Oh, yeah. I'm not normally a betting guy, but like... <laughs> <laughs> Would you bet your life? No, I'm, I'm gonna... I mean... Everything 
on, on Sorenbach, honestly. No offense to Charlie Leary, but Jesus. Would you, bet, would you a, bet your house? If I had a house to bet, yes. Josh, you do have a house. You've got a fucking mansion, dude. What do you mean? Yeah, I make all that Spotify money. Um, Not Spot. You mean Rogue Energy? <laughs> Rogue Energy money. I mean, we're on Spotify. That's what. Shout I do. out Rogue yeah. Energy for shout out Rogue. Shout out Code Sound Off at checkout. The Rogue Energy oh, House. <laughs> the Rogue Energy House. Um. Yeah, man. Anyways, uh, overall, this is a pretty fun card. There is definitely some people to watch. Um. So yeah, man. Should be a fun one. Should be a fun one going down in Pali, France. So, anyways. Yeah, but it's not it's not all we have to talk about this week. Angel, there's a big one. Big one in the boxing world. There was big boxing last week, which we forgot to talk about, but we'll just go and pretend it didn't. We, we could highlight that, Josh. I did watch all of it if you want to, like, kind of, like, uh, like, where's a quick hit it? Like, we'll, we, we'll, yeah, we, we'll, we could we'll, cover it pretty quick. We'll, we'll quick hit it. Uh, so there were two big ones, Amanda Serrano and Katie Taylor, and then also Shakur Stevens and Oscar Valdez. I guess we'll go and start off with, um, just because it was earlier in the night, we'll go ahead and start with Serrano Taylor first. Yeah, that fight was a fucking war. Um, it was fun. It was fun. Going in, they said it was going to be the biggest women's fight of all time. Ended up doing so. Ended up, I mean, they'd be the first women to ever headline Madison Square Garden in a boxing match. They probably beat the record for most watched women's fight of all time. I'm not sure if that's been announced yet, but it looks like it's going to happen. Um, yeah, man, and it was a war. But it, a lot of people said that they didn't like the decision. I thought it was – I mean, it was a close fight, but I Taylor winning. What were your thoughts on the decision? I thought it was a close fight. I'm going to be completely honest. Uh, I saw some scorecards that had it a draw. I would, I look, I missed the first three rounds. Mm, uh, I okay. didn't keep a scorecard for this one. I kept a scorecard for the other fight mo- in like most of it, but yeah. that one, that one was a very clear one though. That, there was uh, no point in keeping a court scorecard. Otherwise I would have, but you know. yeah, it's pretty one sided, but regardless, uh, what was it called? I thought it was a close fight. I thought Toronto looked really good. I do think she kind of punched herself out though. I think she did kind of yep. gas herself. Round, uh, round five, round six. But, uh, but, uh, you know, the night of, I, I had a lot of people really cool with the Katie Taylor decision. But the following days, I had a lot of people kind of be like, no, I think Serrano, I, I saw more Serrano like, yeah. uh, support the fall as, as the days went on. And obviously, the, you can rewatch the fight and, you know, pause it and talk. You know, you could do a lot. So obviously, that, that's a, that plays a big factor, Josh. Because, I mean, let's be honest. If we watch a fight the night of, we score it. And then we watch it a day later. We pause it. We rewind the round. Rewind the round. Watch it, you know. Our, our scorecards will be significantly different, I think, if the fight is mm-hmm. close. Yeah, this fight, I look, dude. I'm so I like it drives me crazy every single fight. Oh my god, robbery! Like it was a legitimately close fight. It was a super close fight. I scored it to Katie Taylor. I gave her the first three, and I believe I gave her the last three. By the way, you're the first that I watched it. Just you know, Josh, you're the first that I've heard say that. Really. Uh, the first that I've heard say that he thought Katie won. I've heard most people say Serrano so far. Oh, I, yeah, I thought it was pretty clear Katie, Katie too. He's obviously the first. The, the I'll mu- say this though, I I missed the first what was it three four rounds, and but yeah. I thought and I thought Serrano was doing good, but at the same time, Katie started coming on at the end, so I wasn't I wasn't able to you know assess it with the first three rounds, would obviously play a big factor. Yeah, I mean the first three rounds, it was one of those close but clear fights. I thought, in my opinion, because like you can have a, you can have like a fight that's close and. Also clear. I thought Katie took the first three rounds. I thought Serrano was coming forward with that pressure, but she was throwing a lot, but also missing a lot. The middle rounds is when she actually started to find home for it, and she was trying to go for the finish, and then she punched herself out. Wait, the wasn't there some weird scorecards, though? Like, wasn't there, like, one really weird, like, one bad scorecard? Um, I can look it up. I don't think... Let me pull up the scorecards while we're, while we're talking. I, th- I think there was two, like, really reasonable ones, and then one that was like, what the fuck? <laughs> they, like, had, they had Katie by, like, a blowout. I might be wrong. No, no. I think I think it was ninety four, ninety six. Somebody so somebody gave uh, Serrano. What would that be? She gave six rounds, right? Mm-hmm. Um, then it was ninety six, ninety three, which was a ten eight in round five, but also gave someone gave her a ten eight that round. Really? That was the one she needed to get knocked down. And um, I'd actually I'd have to pull the scorecards themselves. I do trying to do the math right now. And then ninety seven, ninety three, so at least seven rounds to three. Uh-huh. Seven, yeah, so it was seven rounds to three, seven rounds to three, and then six for Serrano, six to four. I don't think that was that bad. I can see how you can give, because like, like I said, I, I gave the first three to Taylor in the last three. I think that you could probably find round six you could probably give to Taylor. I could see an argument for it. Mm-hmm. I didn't. Um, 
but it's fine either way. I mean, I mean, they, I, I mean to be honest, though, they should run it back. I mean, it was really good. Oh, guaranteed. I mean, they're trying to run it back in Croke Park, apparently, in Ireland, which will be insane. Which, shout that. out to Serrano for being down for that shit, you know? Yeah. And she wanted it, too. She's like, fuck, I'll run it back in Ireland. Yeah. Which, um, by the way, she was a lot more comfortable with the idea of running it back, especially coming after the loss, compared to what Katie was. Which Katie looked like, fuck, man, I don't know about running it back again. I also think that, like, here's the thing. is like, if they have a rematch, they're probably going to pick Serrano, especially if it's three-minute rounds. <laughs> Dude, and she wanted more rounds, and she wanted them to be longer, too. She was saying, hey, why don't we make this longer? Why don't we, you know, let's keep breaking barriers, you know? Which I was like, I, I fuck with that shit. I like that energy. I do, too. Um, I think at this point in time, like, we don't really think about it because Katie Taylor's still undefeated. But, like, I saw somebody make a really good point. And like, dude, Katie Taylor has been, like, und- she's undefeated. She's been boxing for so long. She's about to be 36, dude. We're probably hitting her like we're past her peak probably. Like, but she's still they, really good though. She's still very very good. I think if they run this fight back, I think it's probably gonna be Serrano. I think after that war, I think the fact that she's getting older. Do you think you know, we I get think, a trilogy at that point? Probably, but I don't know. I mean, we should get it though. Like like someone said, you know, there the the good thing the thing with women right now is there's not that many that are as high level as these girls are. And they will push them. There's not many girls that will push the other girl. That they're pushing these kind of girls. So mm-hmm. you might as well put the two of the best to push each other and get the best out of them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's. I I can see a rematch happening. I hope a rematch does happen. But um, I also think like Katie Taylor's in a weird position because I because of all the promotion we kind of forget like oh yeah she. Should have lost Delphine Pearson back a year ago, I believe, two years ago. But mm-hmm. she's had a lot of closer calls recently, which makes me believe like maybe she's getting a bit up there in age, which happens. But I think if they run that shit back, I'm going to go and take Serrano. Even though I did think Katie won, but it was one of those fights where it was like, if Serrano comes into the game, if she doesn't gas out in round five trying to go for the finish, I think she probably does win, honestly. She got, she went way too hard for a finish. Um, she didn't get the knockdown either. So it ended up if you, would have, if you would have got the knockdown, it would have been a draw, right? Probably closer to a draw. I believe, or maybe even a win. I believe it would be... Actually, well, no, she would still lose. She would have still lost. This is where the 96-93 school card came from. Because somebody gave her a 10-8 in round five. But, um, regardless. Yeah, man. I mean, the other fight that happens against Shakur Stevenson, uh, Oscar Valdez. Dude, I, I mean, I'm... I've been high on Shakur Stevenson as a boxer for a really long time. As a yeah. human being, he seems like an asshole, you know? Maybe he's just young, but... I'm sure that's that, a factor, too. Yeah, maybe he's just young, but then, like, that parking garage finish of him, like, beating the shit out of a girl and her friend, it's like, ugh, you know? Yeah, uh, not a good look. Really rough, but regardless, as a boxer, dude, I mean, I... Ever since he fought, like, those COVID cards, and he was just wrecking dudes, it's like, dude, he's a fucking monster. Um, and I think that Jamel Herring win, you can kind of like see like, oh yeah, this kid's gonna that, be a problem for that, a that long was time. that was it, right? Yeah, you're like you, this kid is gonna be a problem for a very long time. So when he fought Oscar Valdez, everybody's like, oh man, it's gonna be this huge fight. I'm like, dude, we, I thought of all this loss to Hobson could say so when they fought in September. Like I, I thought Shakur was gonna come here and wreck him, and yet even then he still managed to impress me. This shit was dominant, man. I get, I gave him. It was dominant, but it, but it was a weird dominant in the sense, he didn't like, he like fucked him up, but didn't fuck him up in the sense of like, uh, Damn, like Max, it wasn't like Max Holloway, Calvin Cater, you know? No, 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 nothing's like that, you know? But like, he just, he couldn't land, honestly, you know, he couldn't land much of anything. I thought he just, he looked, he clowned on him, honestly. He did, yeah, that's what it was. I mean, he was just, he was just there, he was in front of him, and he just couldn't do anything. He couldn't and break he said through. he kept his scorecard for this one. I gave him 10 or 11 rounds. I can't remember. I, I, I didn't score the whole card, or I didn't score oh, it, but okay. I scored it all the way up to the uh, seventh round, and I had it 69-63. Yeah. Yes, I think, I think I saw it for a certain reason. Yeah. Um, <laughs> not even going to react to that one. Um, yeah, I mean, clear You know win, you want to. Win. Fuck off. No, it was a clear win. It was a clear win. Uh, Shot Shakur. I mean, now I'm not sure. What's no, but I had a 69-63 Shakur. That, yeah, if I didn't yeah no, I know. Play. Yeah, I, mean, there's like, no points for I had it 69-63 Valdez, Josh. <laughs> yeah. Um, Could you imagine? <laughs> yeah, man. Um, so, I mean, I don't know what's next for the kid, but damn impressive win. Very, very impressive win. I know. Yeah, no, this is good. I mean, he next challenge, man. I mean, he, he needs to keep going. I mean, he, I, I want to see him fight another high, uh, 
another big time name. And, uh, I mean, these young studs, man, they, they, they're pushing themselves and Valdez did it and Shakur did it and Telfimo and, uh, and, uh, oh my God, why am I blanking on, on, uh, Cambosos did it. Yeah. Uh, and Haney's about to do it. So I, you, you know, you love seeing these young guys. I mean, we, we need, uh, we need Ryan to get back in the mix and we need uh, all these guys to fucking fight each other, man. They need to keep pushing each other and keep getting back to their titles. You, you know what I want, Angel? And I was thinking about it. I was, I was thinking right after you want. I'm like, you know what oh, I want tank. to see, man? Uh, yeah, drip tank. But you know what I want to see, Angel? Mm-hmm. I was thinking about it. I'm like, granted, it's a bit busy right now. There's something going on. But tell me, within the next year or so, I'd say, I'd say a year is pretty solid timing. Mm-hmm. Tell me you don't want to see... The silly Lomachenko versus Shakur Stevenson. Dude, you, that would be that, boxing. I think that'd be boxing at its finest, Josh. Uh, I think that'd be uh, beautiful. Dude, t- Tank Loma would be fun too, dude. There's there's a lot of good stuff out there, and right now that's the fight I want. Like, obviously, I mean, I think that would Loma. be like one of those. That'd be one of those matches that uh. The, the true, the, the, the diehards, you know, the true boxing. The diehards come out for it, yeah. The old heads, you know, they, I think they'd love that, you know? You call me an old head angel? No, 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 but I'm talking about like the boomers that love, they, they, they hate on modern day boxing, you know? Yeah, no, I see what you mean. Um, yeah, man, that's a fucking, I was thinking, I was like, god damn, that'd be a good fight. Now, granted, Loma has an automatic title shot when he comes back anyways. Yeah. Uh, cause he, he passed on it, but, um, dude, within the next year or two, give me that shit. God, like, come on, like, come on, man, come on. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, man. Overall, solid win by Shakur. But we do have a little bit of boxing preview. We're going to go ahead and give our predictions for Canelo Alvarez versus Dimitri Bivol. Canelo obviously looking to capture light heavyweight gold for the second time. Obviously, he fought a ancient Sergey Kovalev. <laughs> I'm not trying to devalue the win. But, yeah, he did fight Sergey Kovalev in November. You know that Kovalev is fighting again, right? Yeah, he's fighting next weekend. Everybody. On a trailer card. Yeah, poor guy. Um... <laughs> No, I'm sure he'll get paid for it, but weird. He's finding um. Oh my God, Pulev's brother, Terrell Pulev, I think. But isn't Pulev name. fighting on that card too? Yeah, Pulev's fighting uh, Jerry Forrest. Yeah, who, I believe he's the one who nearly he Jerry Forrest had like back to back fights where he's like faced prospects or even really good guys and just come out of nowhere and they're like, who the fuck is Jerry Forrest? And he's done really well. Um, was it Michael what? Hunter that he beat? Actually, I looked it up. No, he 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 drew with Zayli Zhang, and he also drew with Michael Hunter. Mm-hmm. Back to back draws, and he's gonna face some cool That's a low key good trailer card. If there is such a thing. Ten, you know. Dude, what's it called? Uh, you know, uh, uh, Evan Holyfield's on it. Yep, it's a it's honestly a low key good trailer card. It's not but big it, at all either. Is this no. shit free? Better be. No, I think it's all paid for you. Oh, who the fuck's paying for that? That's exactly what I said about trailer for the last year and a half. No, there's been some decent trailers. I, I like Triad. I'm just being a dick. Yeah, I'm. I'm <laughs> um, God, Josh, such an asshole, dude. Right? That's what I'm saying. Anyways, uh, yeah, man. But as far as this this fight card goes here, or at least was not this fight card, this fight. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, Before you continue, do you ever, do yeah. we ever know what happened with JDS and Bula? They were supposed to go at it. That got canceled. That did get canceled, and I don't think they're gonna fight. I think that's I think that's it. I mean, yeah. <sighs> Fuck it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I, GDS is fighting in uh, UFC now. So oh, yeah, you yeah, go. you're right. So, yeah, that, that option's out the door. Yeah, there you go, man. But never fucking mind. Never fucking mind, indeed. So, anyways, man. Um, fuck you, Josh, right? <laughs> yeah, fuck you, Angel. Asshole. Um, God. Anyways, man. Such a giga chat today. You, Angel, when am I not a giga chat? I mean, being a giga chat is kind of a compliment, right? Yeah, I, mean, I think that's the pinnacle of compliments, right? I, I think there's literally, you can't go higher than a Giga Chat. No, 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 you're completely right. Anyways, so Canelo is going to be fighting uh, WBA super light heavyweight champion, Dimitri Bivol, 19-0. I think he's, I believe he's ranked as the second best light heavyweight by most people. I mean, I know that he's behind, I can't remember his name. Um, older fella, also Russian. I can't remember his name right now. I'm really pissed off about it. I'm I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm on it. I don't know why. Better be. Like, better be. That's better be. Archer. Better yeah. be. I think Archer's actually fighting next month too. Uh, I'm on it. I'm on the case, Josh. I'm on the case. He's fighting, fighting Joseph Jr., but I can't remember what. Yes, he is the 18th. There you go. So there you go. 
Um, and MSG, by the way. Dope, dude. I'd say, hey, that's a hell of a fight, too. Joe Smith Jr. comes to bang, dude. That guy's never been in a boring fight. But, yeah, man, uh, B-Ball, you know, unlike, you know, I had my criticisms, and I still have them, about the Kovalev fight when it happened back in 2019. Um, you know, the fact he just went through a war like a month and a half previous. He was, he was older, you know. This is the exact opposite of that matchup. Uh, B-Ball is young. He's rested. He's in his prime. And he's a, I mean, this is a tough fight, dude. I feel like people are kind of no-selling how, like, how difficult this fight is going to be for Canelo. I mean, what do you think about that? And, I mean, just, like, I mean, who do you got on this one? I mean, I don't know the odds on this one, but I feel like it's a very, very real possibility people are discussing that Canelo Alvarez is going to lose to Dimitri Bivol this weekend. It's, it's not unrealistic. That's, that's completely a reality, and I think that's what most people should think, actually. Uh if I'm being quite honest with you. The one thing, though, that Canelo has going for him is, dude, uh, the one thing, uh, Dimitri doesn't go, doesn't get, like, hasn't gotten a finish in Sullivan Barrera, you know? Mm-hmm. Correct. And Barrera, and at that point, Barrera was in his late 30s, you know? He, he like, yeah, he's 40 now, you know, and he's, he's, he's gotten KO'd since then. <laughs> uh, uh, you, you know, another time. Granted, those, a, a stud of a guy, like another guy who's, you know, a fucking savage in his own right, who, I fucking love, but regardless, dude, I think that's the one thing Canelo can look forward to. The issue is, though, I'm curious to see the game plan, Josh. I want to see how Canelo comes out here. Like, in, does, does, does he think a finish is capable? Does, does Is he going to, like, come out here, look like a fucking Pernell Whitaker with crazy fucking movement, just go in and out, be a fucking menace? Like, like I, I am, I am like, legitimately, like, just curious to see, like, what he does because – Against Kovalev, he, he, he was coming forward, he was walking down, he had his guard up, like, right, like, just like Valdez had, like, right in front of him, come in, and was trying to land his shots, and he found it, but against B-Wall, dude, I, I don't know how that's gonna work out, dude. Mm-hmm. The bigger guy, his, in, in his more natural weight class, like, that is, a that is the big question coming into this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, it's, uh, I looked at the odds right now, um, Apparently, right now, a, 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 Canelo's anywhere from a minus 420, blaze it, to, to a minus 550. I'll tell you the one else. I'm, I'm looking at minus 350 to a plus 250 uh, B-ball. Yeah, I'm looking at pro boxing odds right now. They give, like, a, they give like a what's it called, like, a range of shit. So. Like, a, like a collective, yeah. Yeah, so, um, anyways, man, very interesting fight. We do have to give our picks for this one. So, Angel, go ahead, my friend. Uh, I'm gonna pick Canelo, Josh. I gotta, I gotta, you know, gotta do it for that legacy shit. You know how it is out here. Yeah, I see. I can see that. Um, you know, for me, a lot of it comes down to this. Um, Dimitri Bivol, you can argue weight classes are a thing, which they absolutely are. And but Canelo has that ability. He he clearly shows that his power transfers up to light heavyweight. Like I guess you can argue that Kovalev was chinny by the time that he ran into Canelo, which I don't think people would disagree with, but. I don't think he's going to be able to get better, not better, excuse me, people out of there. Um, but at the same time, I don't think people has enough offensive firepower to keep him away. Like, I, like, yes, he's been fighting very, very good guys, guys at the top level. But Bivol has that issue where he kind of just coasts because he knows that he's so much more technical than his opponent, which is fine. But what Alvarez's entire, Canelo's entire thing is just marching forward. Like he's gonna march forward. He's gonna land shots on you and until you until he gives you a reason otherwise. Like he's gonna stay on you. He's gonna he march you the fuck down. And we saw that in like I feel like his last fight against Caleb Plant was a really good example of that. Caleb Plant was finding home for the jab. He showed quick hands, great movement. But guess what? He broke him down with shots to the body. I think a similar thing's gonna happen here. I'm thinking Canelo as well. Probably via decision. That's the, that's the thing about a big guy, dude. The body's over there. The body doesn't shift. And, you know, B-Ball is incredible, incredible chin, great defense. He's very, very technical, but I don't think it's going to matter. So. He's one tough Russian. We'll have to see, though, Josh. We'll have to see. I mm-hmm. think, uh, obviously, Mayweather was, I think, still in Canelo's career. is probably the hardest challenge he's ever faced, right? Let's be honest. Up there with Gennady. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, he but, lost to Gennady, so yeah. And, and this is right up there, too. You know, yeah. I think I think with with the stakes, with, with what's on the line, the kind of legacy, the the conversation just put. I mean, this is putting him in all great. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think he's already there. But I, think I mean, he's, he's already there, but he, but he just—it's crazy to think it's still fucking going somehow. 
And yeah. it's not done because he's looking at the next one already and the one after that. You know what I mean? He has them lined up. And that's the thing you got to respect about Canelo, dude, because as far as boxers, dude, the guy is active. Mm-hmm. The guy's active and he's chasing legacy. What he other is, guy why What other guy box. has his fight lined up for his next fight? You know? Yeah. Not knowing the result of his current fight. Canelo has had his next fight lined up since three fights ago, Josh. Mm-hmm. There's no one else in any division who's doing the same thing. Correct. And he's fighting for legacy. And that's something a lot of guys can't really see. And in boxing, like there are there are guys that do fight for legacy one hundred percent. But like Money. there's a reason why they have that problem of guys not finding the best because it's really hard to have the option of like, oh, I can get paid a lot of money or I can go fight a really tough opponent, which will help me down the line in the GOAT argument, but that argument doesn't put food to my table, you know? Yeah. Canelo has enough money to where now, like, is he like is he still making a lot of money? Dude, Absolutely. Canelo doesn't have to fight. Canelo Correct. didn't have to fight like three fights ago, dude. Or five Correct. fights ago, probably. Correct. Canelo's my, my, been balling. My point is, like, he could he can go ahead and fight it. Like, for example, he'd make more money fighting Kamar Usman, who wants to fight him, than he would probably fight in B Ball, but he don't give a fuck. He's fighting this guy for legacy. I mean, he, sure he, he, said heard that, he said that in the tweet. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure he heard that. I'm sure, like, he won't admit to it, but whenever he knocked out Kovalev, people were like, oh shit. Kovalev did almost get murdered two months ago, though. Like, you know, there, there were a lot of facts where people kind of downplayed that win. And I think probably, that's probably, I don't think he'll ever admit it. I think it probably aided him a little bit, you know? And he has an opportunity to go out there and just be like, you know what? I'm going to go fight arguably the best guy now. Like, even whenever he fought Kovalev, everybody kind of saw Kovalev as, like, a temporary champion, you know? Nobody really saw him as, like, that top guy, especially with better be around. And I think B-Ball was champion at that time, too. Now he's going to go out there and fight arguably the best guy of the weight class, and I think he gets it done. Dude, there's been so. doubts, too, Josh. Like, the last couple fights, there's been doubts. Like, I, like ever since that uh that Billy Joe fight, man, leading into Caleb fight, man, there was questions, you know? Like, I feel like people – actually, no. I feel like people were pretty confident in the Caleb play fight. But a lot of people had questions going to that Billy Joe Saunders fight, you know? Yeah, because Billy Joe is a guy that, like, he rides to the level of his competition, you know? And then mm-hmm. he, hey, look, he had some success in there. McKinnell just fucking brought that shit down in one round, man. Like, he did, did he? He was like, yeah, he just need one round. He called and Caleb Plant too, had his own success early, too. Yeah, but then. Caleb Plant had some success, too, and he just needed one, he just, you know, broke him down over the course of the fight. Yeah, Caleb Plant is one tough guy, man. He He tried, but. And we'll have to see what happens this weekend, Josh. I think this is probably the most anticipated fight of the weekend for us outside of uh, Oliveira Gaethje just because of the stakes that are leading into that 155 division and then the following fight that we know that Oliveira or Gaethje has to face. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, but, yeah, man, this is – I'm going to go ahead and take Canal, like I said. Actually, Josh, if you had to rank the main the main events in order, which, I mean, I already have an idea how you'd probably put them, how would you rank them right now? Yeah, Bellator, uh, UFC, and uh, Canelo. All three. That's actually that's actually a tough question. I mean, you go ahead because I'm actually thinking about it right now. Uh, I, I probably oh shit, I'm, you told me to go ahead, Josh. I thought you were ready. Yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say something real quick. I was gonna say I was gonna say Oliveira Gaethje because you know MMA is my sport right now, man. Boxing always has a special place for me, but uh, right now I'm I'm really looking at the 155 division and see what uh, Oliveira can do as far as cementing his legacy and obviously seeing if Gaethje becomes champ. Because I think that's the one thing that Gichi needs in his career. And then number two, I put Canelo in because Canelo is chasing legacy right now. But at the same time, I there's stats in this fight, but I feel like it could be one of those fights where it could be in hindsight. But I'm really excited for it. And boxing is like my, my first passion, and I want to put it yeah. first. But MMA is my thing right now, so that's why I have it second. And then I probably had Bader and Congo last. But don't get me wrong. They're it's not a really dope fight. fight. It's a dope fight. Don't, don't downplay it because it's a bell tour because of the names. It's a sick fight. For sure, for sure. Um, yeah, you know, man, I think I'm going to agree with you. I mean, similar similar thing. Love boxing right now. I'm actually really into boxing right now, man. And uh, boxing is first love, you know. And uh, Shout out Rocky, my favorite boxer of all time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Shout out Rocky. You know. Um, he got robbed against Apollo. It's bullshit. He did. He got fucking robbed, you know. <laughs> Oh, uh, God. Anyways, yeah. I'd probably rank it the same way. I mean, it's not a shot at Bellator, and it's not a shot at, you know, Kimberly, Oh, no. At, no, but, but it's, it's a stacked pay-per-view, Josh, and it's a very big boxing main event. Yeah, I mean, this is one of those rare times where, like, you get it all in one weekend, man. You get all that shit going down at once, and it just 
it's, it's too much. It's one, of those, it's one of those times where, like, I don't – you ever, like, you ever, like, watch people, like, wa- like um see other sports and people are fan- – and that's not to say that we both love other sports. That's not MMA and boxing. But, like, oh, it's yeah. weird like this where I'm like, how the fuck do people not like combat sports? Well, you know what I mean? Dude, I had this conversation with a worker who happens to be female, you know, not saying that was a major factor. Is it, is it the one I think it is? No, 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 different, different. But different that, okay, never mind. That coworker also hates that I watch a lot of fights. What? He's oh talking, my god! You're talking about my girlfriend. Let's just put it out there. You're talking about. I'll have to have a talk with her. Okay. I dude, I tell her I'm like, babe, I just love fights. Like, I, I, I just love the sport. I want to fight. Like, I still think about it every day. Like, at least one time in my career, like, I want to have that walkout. You know? Yeah. Yeah, like that's that's still a goal in my back of my head at some point. And if not, you know, jujitsu or whatever, right? Fucking, you know, something. Yeah, for sure, for sure. No, 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 but this, this is a different coworker, o- older, you know, fam- family woman, because, uh, you know, she, she tells me what I'm into. We were talking about just, like, stuff that we like, hobbies and stuff, and obviously I'm I'm younger, so my hobbies are different, right? But, mm-hmm. but you know, because of the field I work in, I, I'm not forced, but, you know, I there's a lot of older people in my field. And uh, so I got into the conversation of fighting and talking about fighting. She wasn't, uh, she's was like, I, I, don't, I don't like fighting. I'm not a fan. And she was like, I don't like watching it. She's like, I wish it didn't exist. And I was like... Oh, dude, it triggered me a little bit. But, you know, I, I got where it coming from because, you know, not everybody – I mean, even 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 us, Josh, at times, like, we're kind of like, fuck, man, these these fights are a bit rough. You know what I mean? Like, uh, like Volkanovski zombie, you know? I, like, I, you know, Josh, I, I closed your eyes for a second with my hand. You know, I had to put my hand over your face because <laughs> I, was, I was worried for you and myself. No, and I, I, I mean, I, I – I, you didn't do it too soon, dude. I woke up in a cold sweat just imagining that I was the Korean zombie. Like, I just <laughs> – that night. You had, you had flashbacks. <laughs> <laughs> that's in PTSD, dude. It was rough. Um, You're not wrong. It, it, not and on top of that, Josh. Not the only. We have fucking NBA, uh, NBA finals going on at the same time too. Ah. And then like this week, like I well, you know, you know what I mean. But still, but yeah, and, know. You, know, you know what I mean. But, yeah, we, dick, yeah. We, you know, we got the NBA going on. Fuck a uh, Champions League for all my soccer fans out there. And this weekend we got the Miami Grand Prix for all my F1 fans out there. I actually did hear about this. The only reason I heard about this is I'm pretty sure didn't EA just announce an F1 game? Like, uh, right now? I don't know, but if they did, that's sick. I think they literally did just, like, right now. Shut up. Yeah, shut up, then. Uh, yeah, man, I mean, this doesn't mean to, like... But, like, I've, I've, I've pondered this before. You know what I mean? Like, I'll, I understand why some people don't like it, especially older people, but it's, like, there's just something so, like... You just, like, get... Like, I was I was getting... I was watching Fury, Dillian White, where just, <laughs> like... Do you want to have that conversation right now about, like, why you like combat so much? Like, I don't think we've ever talked about why we like combat. I think it's a very – I even had myself having a hard time explaining why I like the sport, funny enough. Mm. So I actually want to have this conversation recorded and have out there for, you know, future reference and, you know, for people to listen. Yeah. I mean, do you want to go know, ahead and try and explain the best you can? Uh, yeah, yeah. And on top of that, I mean, you know, we'll get people, you know, we'll have people who come across our podcast who don't know about the sport, right? Or even I'll mention people at the podcast that that don't watch MMA, you know, but they're interested in the fact that I do it because they're like, oh, that's cool, you know? Yeah. So I think putting this conversation out there will be something interesting. This actually be a great clip. But, yeah. uh, you know, how, how, why, why, why do you like combat sports specifically, Josh? You know, I'm always like, here's like a kind of like, this is like two big reasons, right? This, this is a deep cut here, bro. This is a deep cut, all right? But a lot of it comes down to, I think it, there's probably three reasons, but um, and I can go, I'm, I'll go over them as quickly as I can um, and try and, like, explain this, like, as best I possibly can. But, um, you know, I was always a big, like, growing up, I, I liked football and ba- basketball didn't really click with me until I was, like, older and then it was only, like, a brief time. But there was something about, like, I was a big video game. It, it's really nerdy the way I'm first going to explain it, but, like, I was really big into video games, and I was really big into strategy games. And there's something about just, like, people look at it and they see, like, just violence. It's like, yes. anytime you go in there, like, it is the most high-level strategy game you can possibly do. In in comparison, like, as much as I'm a fan of boxing, boxing doesn't really have the same degree as this. Because in, in MMA, it's mixed martial arts. There's a lot of different disciplines that go into it. There's a lot of different ways you can win. No fight, one fight, is the same as you're going to watch a different fight. You know what I mean? Like, no one fight is the, is can be replicated again. You know what I mean? Everything is different. You're going in there with people with different skill sets, different like abilities than any other person. No one fighter is the same. Like there are guys who go out there, they're they're jiu-jitsu guys. There's the Damian Mize of the world. 
But the Damian Myers of the world, they're different from the Habib Magomedov of the world, who mixed in the wrestling and the grappling and the ground and pound and so on and so forth. But he's different from the Gunnar Nelsons of the world, who are like, and that's all just within one discipline of grappling. And then, you know, there's there's kickboxers out there, but they have different styles and different techniques and so on and so forth. Like, like Stephen Thompson is a karate guy, and on the surface that looks similar to maybe a converter, but they're so much different, even the fact, even despite the fact that they have the same discipline, which is starting off in karate, you know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. so different. Not one fight is the same. You know, I've watched a lot of football. I've watched a lot of basketball. A lot of them are very similar, which is fine. I enjoy it. And you can even argue the same thing for fighting to a degree, but I very much disagree. I think mm-hmm. there's just something so unique about every single time you're going out there and you're watching these guys do it. Another part of it is just because, and I hate to like sound like a bro here, but there's something so fucking primal about it. Like there's, yes. there is something very, very primal about going out there and seeing like these people. Like it's the most, it's a natural thing, dude. I think it's something people are afraid to admit, but combat is 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 normal t- to human beings. You know what I mean? Well, and before before. Stick and ball sports were a thing, you know? It was combat. Motherfuckers were fighting. Like, that's just... the And I think the current... And I'm not suggesting we go back to gladiator times. Jesus Christ, no. But no, like, no, my, no, no. It's like, there's something very, very cool about the fact that it's like, you're allowing these people to go out there and just fight and use their abilities to the best of their ability and put on a show for people who also... You know, it, it's very high-level strategy. Like, and, and still being a sport too, right? Still keeping it sport like. There's right? there's it. wins and law. There's rules involved. People like people on the surface just think like, oh, it's just. It is can be vicious at times. At the same time, there are rules in there. There are a lot of shit that they have to go through in order to get cleared to fight. There's a lot of doctors they have to see. There's oversight from commissions, so on and so forth. Which sometimes ruins it too, but you know. Yeah, but I mean, it just it is what it is. Another part of it is just because I grew up doing like. Karate and I did kickboxing at times and I grew up like I, I watched boxing with my dad but at the same time it like it clicked with me at some times and like it didn't at other times and just like I don't know just some of that drew me about like drew me to it I remember like the earliest experience I went to the bookstore when I was 11 and I got 11 or 12 I think it's like 12 and they had a DVD of UFC 141 which I believe was Brock Lesnar versus Alistair over him you can fact check this I'm not sure if that was the card by the way I um, love how this is so similar to like Joe going to a video store in LA and finding <laughs> a UFC 2 video you know like it's it's kind of yeah. crazy how similar it is yeah well I went there and I saw it and I was like I knew who Brock Lesnar was because I was a WWE fan I still am uh, like a pro wrestling fan, and I knew who Brock Lesnar was, but I didn't know much about his fighting, and I just saw him go in there, I knew, I was like, oh man, I like, I like Brock Lesnar, and he just got massacred by this <laughs> freak of a human being, who we later found out was on, like, everything. Who, who like, was he again? Huh? Brock and who else? Who was the fight? Overeem. Holy fuck. This was Uberim, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm aware. And he was on all of the horse meat, you know, he was totally, he was just taking his vitamins. And he eating, was using eating clean. You know, he was, he was juicing, you know. Um, big fan of the Nutribullet, that guy, you know. Um, <laughs> but, you know, he, he, there was something about it, man. There was just something about it. And then I ended up, there was a podcast to listen to where Joe Lozon was on. Shout out Joe, friend of the show. Um, and, it, like, I, I don't think I've told this sh- I think, I'm, actually, I'm, I know I've told that, sh- that story. Yeah, you you told that story, story, yeah. On, on the show before. But, um, yeah, man. And he was just like, about, it just kind of led into it. Yeah, and he was talking about um, John Jones and Dan Cormier before their first fight even happened. This is like when it was first scheduled at UC 178, I believe. What a great um, fight to lead into, right? You know, I was, just, I was like, oh, damn, this shit sounds awesome. Because Cormier was undefeated. John was undefeated. I was like, and I know what MMA was, and I was kind of a casual fan. Some of the bigger names, I didn't really know much about either one of those guys. And I was like, I got, sat down, found me, found me at Buffalo Wild Wings, you know? And yeah. I uh, <laughs> went out on your own, you know? Went out on my own, you know? Um, <laughs> And yeah, man, there's just something really. I mean, wh- why do you watch combat sports? Like, I, I know you kind of agree with me, but like, try and explain it. You life. know something? The seed was always there, and I never really noticed it because now that you're kind of talking, kind of setting the picture, I've always, I've, like I tell you, one of my favorite all time movies. Like, I, if I had to name my three time all favorite movies are Harry Potter, like the tr- like all not the trilogy, but you know the whole fucking just saga. I was like, there's like nine of those movies. Man. Yeah, Back to the Future. Future. <laughs> yeah, Back to the Future. And uh, Rocky. Those are like my all three time favorite movies. Rocky's like number one, like right up there. Uh, you see, just the first? No, like yeah. I mean, if you if you want to really narrow it down, yeah, Rocky one, right? Like you know, but 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 all those have multiple movies. But I love all the movies of all those movies. You know? Yeah. Like I love all three Back to the Future movies. There's three, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. 
Yeah, I love all three of them. I love all the Harry Potter movies, and I love all the Rocky movies. I've seen pretty much all of them. I've skipped a few, just just out of personal choice. I need to force myself to watch them. But uh, and for me, man, there was just something that like resonated in me at such a young age, where like the life lessons within like like combat, like that movie, just hit me because I knew how it translates to sport and just life in general. And it, and finding this out like at a very young age, dude, like at a very like I had to been. I'd have been under 10, Josh. Like, I'd have been maybe under 8, maybe even, when I saw these movies. And uh, I'm, I'm telling really young here, by the way, <laughs> for yeah. a lot of people. But it, but it's true. Uh, and, and, and it just resonated with me. And then, I, you know, I and then as I, I went on, I found out about Bruce Lee. And, you know, I found out about, you know, Kung Fu and shit. And I'm like, dude, that shit's always – and it always interested me. And I was into Bruce Lee. And I watched documentaries. And I watched, like, old clips. And, you know, the seed was always planted. And then I wanted to do boxing, and I, I started boxing a bit. I kind of got into it. Uh, had a couple, you know, did some amateur stuff when I was younger. Didn't didn't end up working out, but you know that's how life is. And I wish I would have stuck with it because I, I I think as far as for my own well being, it would have been a great thing. And uh, a lot of just like uh, I, I like a lot of lessons that are in sports, man, and especially specifically in combat. There's no team. It's only you. There, there you, you and there's different ways to approach it, man. You could be super technical. You could be super not technical. You know. And, and and just the, the different personalities in fighting and, and kind of how it is because you get them in sports, man, in a regular like ball, you know, sports and, and stick ball, ball and stick sports, like you say. Yeah. But it, but but it's completely different in fighting because I I I said this about soccer when someone and because someone's like, why do you like soccer so much? But I, I said, look, in basketball and football, look, to an extent, making a basket's never going to be the same like scoring a goal in a World Cup. You know, there's something about eleven guys being together in a and somehow getting through this other defense who has the same objective and some some way orchestrating a play. I kind of see the same level of complexity I do in fighting. And, and the same thing as fighting is dude, there's something about one guy going up against like another guy who knows he can hurt you and you can hurt him and both mutually making this agreement of like, hey, we're going to fuck each other up, but after this we're going to be cool. You know? Mm. And, 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 and then, like you said, just the styles and all that and, and just the, the just like all the lessons that go into it, man. I, there's just so much. I have like this weird like – Kind of like a love for it that I, that I think is different from a lot of people because I connect a lot of a, like of emotional like connection to it because uh, there's just something about seeing someone win and and the way in which they win and their stories and 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 and, and the stuff that happens man because sometimes you listen to some of these stories and they don't seem like reality dude like the like like the Conor McGregor man like being on fucking welfare tra- becoming champ and cage wars you know and, and 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 winning fucking two titles and two weight divisions and then. Getting the call from the UFC and then going to the UFC and and making the big money and beating Jose Aldo and talking shit in Brazil and knocking him out in a few seconds and you know all that shit's badass you know what I mean like th- mm. that that it doesn't even seem real you know what I mean it doesn't seem like reality you know like that shit mm. is you don't get that in any other sport you know like you do, you do in some aspects but there's nothing like when when you're when you're fighting dude you you have fucking no one dude. There's there's no leeway into it, you know. Boxing, yeah. There's kind of like ways into it, right? You could go into the gym, go up the amateurs, right? But even then, dude, the build up, right? Like the the way up there, like fucking Deontay Wilder, dude. This guy was driving a fucking like what was it, a, a coke truck or or something like that? He was driving a truck or something. And this guy's like, you know what I'm saying? I need to make money for my daughter because she's because she's sick, and uh, mm-hmm. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna fucking I'm gonna become a pro boxer. Guy goes to the Olympics, wins bronze medal within like yeah. four years of box. Fucking insanity. Goes on to be heavyweight champion of the world. One of the hardest hitters. Like, dude, I don't get that shit in basketball. I don't get that shit in football. I don't get that shit in hockey. I don't get that shit anywhere else, dude. Yeah. You know? And he wasn't making any money to start. You know, he wasn't making money like he does now. And he says they're fucking balling out and they're taking care of their families, man. You don't get that anywhere else. Mm-hmm. It is. There is. It's very unique in comparison to other sports. Like, it's, it's also one of the ones where it's like. It's no, one of the few sports that can make me cry too, Josh. Yeah. From from out of happiness and sadness, and mm-hmm. excitement, and nerves, it can hit yes. all. This. It hits all the emotions, dude. I get I get every single emotion when I'm watching combat. I don't get every single emotion when I'm watching basketball. I'm gonna be 100 percent honest with you. Yeah. I mean, it's it's definitely one of those. It's one of those sports. It's very very unique, and also one of the things I like about it is like there's no there's no like. How can I phrase this? Like in other sports, you have to be an athlete. You have to be a one of a one of one, like in order to kind of reach the top level. 
we've seen people who pick up like there's no set story in order to be an MMA champion. Even just a guy fighting in the sport. Like in basketball, you hear about guys all the time. They've played since they're four years old and they get you, the NBA. You, you want my prime example right here, Josh? You're going to love it. Go ahead. We love this. Ryan Hall. Ryan, Ryan Hall. Would, that's an interesting one. Dude, Josh, do you think Ryan Hall would be an NBA player? Do you think no, Ryan I, Hall could be a basketball not, player? Like he looks like a guy that would be like my IT guy. Exactly. But Ryan Hall could fuck you up on the street if he saw you. Yep. That's right. why I love this sport. Well, and here's the thing is, like, there are guys where it's, like, you know, like, guys that just will go ahead and, um, like, to bring back my other point, like, basketball guys, so they'll play their entire lives to make it to the big league. Like, they'll, a lot of their stories are essentially all the same. Yes, there can be little differences. But, like, in MMA and combat sports in general, it's like, Bernard Hopkins, you know how Bernard Hopkins, Angel, I'm sure you know this, but, like, you know how he, he became, like, a world championship boxer, right? At an old age, too. Well, no, but like you know, like his his early beginning, right? He was in a he went to jail, right? He went to jail and yeah, yeah. He he went to jail. He was I think he was sentenced to like something like twenty years when he was like seventeen. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think he got off parole after like five or six. But during that time, there was a rehabilitation program where they were able to go ahead and box. Shout, and shout out to whoever did that, right? Yeah, and he became an amateur boxer. He left, became a pro. He went on to become one of the greatest light heavyweights of all time. You know, a guy like Alexander Kasovsin in in MMA. He was a guy that also it's not even known because you you look at Alex nowadays. He's he's almost like a gentle giant, super nice guy. But right. during his youth, he had a lot of problems. He went ahead and became a criminal. But guess what? He eventually found MMA. He found his way in his early twenties. He be, went on to become one of the greatest light heavyweights of all time. Jimmy Wan. Here's another example. Jimmy Manoa didn't start training MMA until he was, like, 26. Yep, yep. And he became a huge knockout artist, one of the better guys of the 2010s at 205. Josh, and the stories could be even – Josh, one of my favorite stories in MMA, Francis Ngannou, yep. immigrant, nothing, traveled a fucking sea to go to another country, dude, not knowing the language, not knowing anything, with the dream of becoming a pro fighter. I mean, dude, that, that's, that story puts you into fucking tears, dude. Yep. You know, if, if, you know, and, and it's gonna be any, a movie one day. Oh, it's gonna be a movie one day. And to, and, and to any people here who are listening, who, are, who who have migrated from their country, if you want to listen to a story of success and and anything, go listen to you know. And I don't get free promo, Josh, but go listen to that podcast with Joe Rogan, because I, mean, I really don't think Joe Rogan needs our promotion. No, 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 he doesn't. But you know what I mean. If if, if someone who's new to the sport, right? You know, someone who doesn't know the sport, right? And, and maybe he's just finding out through us, right? And they're, you know, and they're listening to this for some reason. A few years, you know, and, and fucking, you know, Josh, in the year fucking 2057, when someone, for instance, and is retired, you know, and, and history's gone by, and someone's listening to our little podcast for some goddamn reason, and they listen to us, and they want to hear a good story. There you go. You know? Yep. Like, that 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 shit's a movie, dude. That shit isn't even real when you hear it. And, and there's, and there's, and it's crazy to think there's other guys that you might not, we don't even know, Josh, off the top of our head. I mean, fucking GSP, Josh, he was a garbage man. He was a garbage man and trained and traveled between Canada and the U.S. to fight. Had, you know, like that, uh, our boy DJ, he fucking worked like, what, could, like a, like a roofing construction. company? Construction. Five foot something, Demetrius Johnson, who you probably saw in high school and didn't think he would be a professional fighter and be the great, one of the greatest of all time, if not the greatest of all time. Yeah, you know, like th- there's so many guys like that, and, and and like you said, it's not like traditional sports where, you know, you're you're a five star recruit, and you know you you might be, and you know I'm, I'm referencing this, but you might come from a shitty neighborhood, but you make it out, but dude, you had the talent for it, you know what I mean? And you had you had the path to get there, and you had to keep going. It there is no path like that in fucking MMA or boxing, mm-hmm. to an ex- you know to to a real extent. Yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe you're an NCAA wrestler, but dude, you, you don't know, you don't know jujitsu, you don't know how to strike, you know, you've never been in a cage before, you know, you gotta learn all those aspects too, right? Yeah. You know, like, yeah, you have this pedigree, but still, dude, it's like, there's still no easy way out, even when you have something, dude. Mm-hmm. I yeah, think man, I think I mean, I, I, we hit that hard, man. I think I think we got to I think we cut it. I think we need to cut it there, dude. I think. Yeah, I think we should cut it there. Um, that was a great wait. That was a great that ending. Was, that was a great ending, and uh, yeah, um, that was fun. Yeah, it's definitely you know here's actually here's a good video if you guys have have time. 
you brought the friends and got it. Look up um, it's one of my favorite YouTubers. I don't know if he still make makes videos like as much as he used to, but Tommy Toehold. I think he's I think his video is like titled the uh, Why I Love Fighting. It's a really good video, and once you get past the point of like he's an animated character talking a lot, you go ahead, you'll like the video too. Um, I love Tommy Toehold. I'm looking uh, this up out of curiosity. Great dude, love him. But yeah, oh, it's um, this guy. Yeah, love that guy. But yeah, um, yeah, man. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Um, I'm at Josh Shevin on Twitter. He's at Angel Take It Underscore A One at Courtside Sound for all things related to the show. Feel free to give us a like, a follow on Spotify, Apple, um, YouTube, anything else. Hope you guys enjoyed. Peace and butt grease. Mouse click.